picking in the top five of this month's NFL draft. ESPN's Adam Schefter reporting the Falcons are open to moving out of the number four spot. They have received trade calls from multiple teams. As many as five quarterbacks expected to be drafted in the first round. BYU Zach Wilson leading candidate to head to the Jets at two where he will succeed Sam Darnold. Darnold yesterday traded to Carolina where he gets a fresh start. Points out our Keyshawn Johnson. He's in a better place, I think. He won't have to endure the New York pressure of failing to a degree for the first several years of his career. And now he gets an opportunity to go to Carolina and kind of hit the reset button. Keyshawn on Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenti. First round Masters tee times among the notables. Defending champ Dustin Johnson, 10.30 a.m. Eastern on Thursday. Brooks Kepka, Bubba Watson, 10.06 a.m. Eastern. Jordan Spieth at 2 Eastern. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern Thursday, ESPN TV. An MRI is scheduled today for Padres star shortstop Fernando Tatis Jr. on a partially dislocated left shoulder suffered last night. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts and an app that lets you bank anytime, anywhere, choosing Capital One is, like, the easiest decision in the history of decisions. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Capital One and a member FDIC. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Let's And off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. I'm Matt. I appreciate it, bud. Have a good one. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. The Brain. And the Brain got a poop. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Make it a good one. Uh, game day for LSU baseball, taking on McNeese. Uh, the Cowboys head coach, Justin Hill, been a good friend of the show for a lot of years. He'll be with us bottom of this hour. We'll go around the SEC. Fines walk, talking some beer and some hoops next hour. Uh, Dr. Chip Bankston in hour three. We will talk about Jaden Hill's injury, that UCL, uh, what it means both short and long term for um, uh, the Tiger Ace, who uh, his LSU career, as we uh, discussed yesterday, very likely is over with the injury. Um, so I'm always honest with you. Uh, no reason ever for me to lie. Uh, in a moment of extreme candor, uh, this week sucks. I am really sick and tired of opening the mic every day and having to talk about body cam fo- footage involving uh, LSU players. I'm really sick of having to talk about the head football coach making statements to a Senate committee. I'm really sick of having to do things like this. Um, but... It's, I mean, you you lead with the biggest story, and one of the biggest stories nationally today is certainly as it pertains to the local teams that we all follow and cover, is this report from USA Today that uh, LSU Athletic Administrator Sharon Lewis is preparing to file suit against basically every damn body. Um. Kenny Jacoby uh, from USA Today has the story. Uh, Sharon Lewis, LSU Associate AD, suing her bosses, LSU board members, Taylor Porter, and others, alleging a RICO Act conspiracy to cover up Title IX complaints and years of sexual abuse and retaliation for reporting Les Miles' sexual harassment. Um, There's a big thread if you want to go see uh, at Kenny Jacoby on Twitter, a big thread, him kind of explaining what's in the piece. Uh, It is, I have it in my hand, printed um, in its entirety. This is nine pages at uh, 11 point font, uh, 3,700 words. And you get one side of the story, which is Sharon Lewis's side. However, uh, the commentary herein the corroborating evidence from witnesses and the Hush Blackwell report served to prove that most everything Sharon Lewis says in here has a certain degree of validity to it. 
Um, I'm not going to go through every bit of this. You can go read it yourself. It took me about half an hour to read the entire thing. It is a long, uh, extensive piece. But essentially, there are a series of federal and state lawsuits that are expected to be filed this week. Uh, Sharon Lewis says she was tormented, discriminated upon based on sex and race. She was underpaid. And all of this contributed to LSU's systemic failure to protect students and hold perpetrators accountable for gendered violence and harassment. Um, Attorneys say they plan to file a a federal Title IX lawsuit, a state whistleblower lawsuit, an equal employment opportunity grievance, and a civil lawsuit under the federal RICO statute, which is used to dismantle organized crime rings. Uh, In this lawsuit, defendants include Verge Osberry, Miriam Seeger, Bo Bonson, members of the LSU Board of Supervisors, the law firm Taylor Porter, former LSU President F. King Alexander, and current athletics director Scott Woodward. Um, a few of the contents herein. Um, of course, Lewis was hired in 2002. She's worked in the recruiting office. She says Les Miles repeatedly pressured her to replace black student workers on her recruiting staff with blonde women or light-skinned black women who he considered prettier. She refused many times over, reported Les Miles. Ultimately, in 2012... Miles decided he would personally start interviewing student workers in his office at night. Some of the women disclosed to Lewis that during meetings, Miles asked them about their sex life. One student said Miles asked her if she was a virgin. In January of 2013, one student told Lewis that Miles got on top of her in his office on his couch. Sharon Lewis notified Miriam Seeger, later Verge Osbury. The Hush Blackwell report found no records indicating that this student's complaint was investigated in a manner consistent with then-university policy. The next month, another student worker came to Lewis reporting Miles made sexual advances toward her, sending her inappropriate text messages. This is what sparked the Taylor Porter Law Firm back in 20... uh, Law Investigation back in 2013, which then led to the settlement, which was included in the Hush Blackwell report. The attorney, Vicki Crochet, her investigation concluded that Miles' conduct was inappropriate but did not rise to the level of prohibited sexual harassment under law. So apparently climbing on top of a college woman in your office on a couch and making sexual advances does not constitute sexual harassment according to this Taylor Porter investigation. All righty then. Uh, We continue. Miles... After these incidents, Lewis said she was the target of repeated retaliation by the coach. The most pointed part of this, Les Miles confronted Lewis about the type of girls he wanted for a recruiting event. She rejected his orders. He ordered everyone to leave the room. Quote, he got in my face and said if I was a coach and didn't do what he said, he would punch him in his mother effing face, Lewis said. Quote, I said, I guess you'll just have to punch me in my mother effing face. Lewis reported the encounter to Sam Nader, Verge Osbury, Bo Bonson, and others. Sam Nader responded by saying, next time, I need to just say what Coach Miles wanted me to say. Verge Osbury told her to look for another job. Lewis said she suffered a mental breakdown. Miriam Seeger set her up with a therapist, but it was never investigated by leadership of the university. Les Miles was fired in 2016. Do you want me to stop? Do you want me to stop? Or keep, because there's tons more. Les Miles was fired in 2016, but many of the administrators who took his side stayed, and they apparently continued to retaliate against Lewis, including Verge Osbury, who had been hostile at one point. Osbury called Lewis a, quote, stupid, incompetent B on the phone, unaware that he was on speakerphone and Lewis was in the room. Lewis reported it to Miriam Seeger and Joe Oliva, who apparently made a joke about it. Seeger suggested she'd be happier working somewhere else. They also reference the dating violence against then LSU football player Drake Davis, which Lewis says she reported. Neither Osbury or Seeger apparently took that to the school's Title IX office. There's one part in here, and I'll make it a, a 
larger, wider reaching point here in a second. But the alleged victim of Drake Davis's violence told USA Today that Lewis may have been retaliated against, but that Lewis should be held accountable for the way that she, Lewis, treated her, Richardson, the victim, the alleged victim. Richardson said in 2016, Lewis and her assistant laughed at her when she told him she was scared of Drake Davis, told her she could go to the police if she wanted to ruin his life. Lewis does deny laughing at Richardson, says she reported everything, but you have a contradiction there. Scott Woodward, for what it's worth, despite requests over the past two years since he was hired, has never met with Sharon Lewis once, which is why he's listed in this report. Um, Is Sharon Lewis's account accurate? Probably. There's probably a lot in there that's accurate, as we stated. Much of it's corroborated and included in the Hush Blackwell report. Are there defenses for some of the accused against these accusations? Probably. Probably some. The bigger issue is that now, because LSU has decided they're going to fight these fights, now they must try to discredit Sharon Lewis the same way that they had to discredit Gloria Scott and releasing those audio recordings and text messages Monday. Because they have to discredit her as a credible witness, they'll have to discredit Sharon Lewis as well, which means now LSU is going to have to go unearth whatever dirt they have on Sharon Lewis over her 19 years in Baton Rouge. And what that means is more mud. You ever seen a movie with a cafeteria fight or a TV show with a, with a food fight in a cafeteria? It usually starts with one person like pouring some spaghetti on somebody or a drink on someone's head. And then someone retaliates by throwing mashed potatoes at their face. And then invariably someone at a, at a table not participating at all gets hit with the crossfire. And then they throw food. And then all of a sudden the whole entire damn cafeteria is throwing food and everybody's filthy. That's this. There's no way around it. When you start slinging mud and everyone's retaliating, everyone gets dirty. And the only way to clean it up is to just stop. But LSU's not. LSU's going to keep on down this path to the detriment of the university, the athletic department, everyone who works there, who went there, who currently attends school there, to the detriment of everyone who touches LSU in any way. They're going to keep going down this path. Because as I told you months ago, people with power, influence, and money don't like to give up their power, influence, and money. So they're not going to punish themselves. They're going to go on with status quo. Meanwhile, the victims have been empowered, and they're going to keep coming forward, and you're going to continue having things like this happen over and over and over and over and over again to the detriment of everyone involved in the university to the benefit only of those trying to keep their jobs. And yes, it pisses me off because I'm sick of it. As someone who wants to have fun here and talk about sports, as someone who doesn't like the fact, is appalled by the fact that people who were treated poorly, who were raped and assaulted, had their accusations brushed aside, as someone who loves LSU and wants what's best for it, this pisses me off over and over again. And every damn day, it's like, it's like ripping a scab off every day and that thing starts bleeding again. I'm sick of it. The adults involved in this won't act like it. Everyone feels like they're Teflon. Nothing's going to stick to me. Mud, bro. Gets everybody dirty. You included. All right. When that lawsuit is filed and goes to a very messy either settlement or trial, we'll certainly follow it here because we're obligated. And at some point today, we'll get to the statement that Ed Ogeron released to the Louisiana Senate Committee. Uh, when we come back, we'll go around the SEC. We'll also talk some LSU baseball in about 15 minutes. Justin Hill, McNeese head coach, former Tiger, brings his McNeese Cowboys into the box. McNeese has beaten LSU three of the last four times they've played, so good opportunity here for the Tigers. We'll get right before they go to, uh, to Kentucky this weekend. Glad you're here. It's AFR. AFR. Buying or selling a home? Think real estate? Think Darren James. 335-7666, 335-7666, or agent225.com, agent225.com. You know the drill. If you're, if you're thinking of selling your home, call the realtor that sells more homes than anyone. Call Darren James at 335-7666. List your home with Darren James. 
get it sold faster for more money. You realize 73% of people that list their home for sale by owner end up hiring a realtor. You want to know why? Most people don't know how to price their homes. Maybe you're just not home enough to show it every time someone wants to see it. There's a lot of different reasons. But 73% of people that list their home for sale by owner end up hiring a realtor. Save yourself the time, the hassle. Call Darren James. Get your home sold. And if you're thinking of buying a home, let a realtor, let Darren James go to work for you to identify that property and get you the best deal. 335-7666 or agent225.com. Think real estate. Think Darren James. Oh, hey, what's up? It's Big D and Bubba, 100.7 The Tiger Morning Show. We'd love for you to join us every weekday, 4 a.m. till 9 a.m. Yeah, everything you want in a show. Country music. We got laughs. We got celebrity in-studio guests. We just need you. Join us every weekday morning, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., right where it all started. That's right. Louisiana's country station, 100.7 The Tiger. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. <laughs> Can you feel it? It is almost here. And if you got a new boat for Christmas or you just want to take your boat to a new level, you want front to back boat service, HD displays, live sonar that show the fish before you cast, trolling motors. At front to back, they got not one, but two NMEA certified techs for all of your marine electronic needs. How does a brand new speaker system sound? Well, guess what? They do that too. So call 225 928 9644 or go to front to back boat service. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 222- After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 2930450 After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. I prayed about it. I felt led. God has blessed us with unbelievable players, the people that have come for 18 years to put in work, our fans that have been with us for the lean years, the good years, and our administration, President Livingstone, Mac Rhodes, they all deserve this. The city of Waco deserves this. Hey, Texas, we got a national championship, too. The state deserves it. That is Scott Drew, Baylor head basketball coach. The Baylor Bears are the national champions. They put a hurting on Gonzaga yesterday. Uh, Hey, Brain, by the way, didn't we yesterday on the show say the wrong team was favored in the ballgame? I believe so, yes. Yeah, that's a thing that happened IRL. Happened right here, as a matter of fact. So if you went with us, you want a little money. 
<laughs> As a matter of fact, did you happen to see the uh, bracket challenge results? That would be the 104.5 ESPN bracket challenge. Who did, was that? Pre- it was presented by like a you know, a lot of different things. Do you remember all the? No. Uh, I don't remember all yeah, of it. That's no. okay. No worries. Thanks to everyone who participated though in the bracket challenge. Um, Acura. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, so a uh, Jimmy Yacht won the bracket challenge as far as the uh, the ESPN team. He finished first overall uh, with a score of two sixty two. Uh, second place, right behind the Ott father. Uh, pull this up, Paulie, if you would here. Let's see if we could see who that is. Um, oh, let me zoom in. I, my eyes aren't my eyes aren't real good. Let's see who finished in second. Oh, oh, would you look at that? That's me. How in the what now? How, how could that happen? Since I don't know anything. Now, technically. Ott is a pro, right? I mean, the guy's been a professional gambler forever. Yes. So, so technically, I kind of won the amateur contest then. Is that the route you're taking? Well, I, is there really any shame in losing the Ott in something like this? No. I mean, <laughs> no, there's what, not. It's what it is. Now, I'll tell you where the shame should come in. All right, so I look, a, a distant third was a Jacob Hester with 194 points. Tied with Anna. Mm-hmm. From Condon Uncensored and Matthew Muso. Dead last was Danny Cardenas, the video producer from Off the Bench. And second to last was T-Bob with 124 points. Troy LaBeouf, who I don't even know how he gets into this every year. On the, Troy knows people. On the staff. He knows I people. I love Troy, but God bless. He doesn't work here, but he's there every year. Troy is on here. Scott Robb. All fit in... Eh, Michelle Southern lapped T-Bob. By the way, maybe we found Hanny's new co-host. How about hanging with Hanny and Michelle? Yeah. Or hanging with Michelle and Hanny. I like it. Not a bad thought. Not a, no. Mm. No, not bad at all. I mean, if those numbers hold up. Off the bench with Hester and, and Anna. Let's kick T-Bob to the curb. What do you say? Well, that would move T-Bob down the hall to set him up with Richard, and I don't uh, know if that would work out. That actually would probably go exceptionally well. You know what? It might. I mean, T-Bob and Condon in the morning on Eagle 98.1? That's a hell of an idea. I mean, if you're into Total Train Wreck, sure. God, isn't that the point of Morning Rock jo- Shock Jock Radio? Yeah, a little bit. Go for it. Those bit. two? A little oil and water. T-Bob talking Dungeons and Dragons and Star Wars and Condon calling him goofball every morning. I'm, I'm here for it. I'd, I'd listen every day. Golden content. I don't know. Golden content. I'd like to congratulate everybody who finished way, way behind me uh, in the bracket challenge. Brain, you're behind Muso there. 192 points. Paul did, oh, Paul did fill out a bracket. 186. Look, a, a solid showing. Our entire staff here. Finished ahead of Chris Elliott, Condon, Michelle, Hunt Palmer, Hanny, Scott Robb, Troy LaBeouf, T-Bob, and Danny Cardenas. Not bad, man. We had a really solid showing here. I'm proud of you guys. You kept your head on a swivel. Thank you. That's what you got to do when you find yourself in the middle of a vicious cockfight. It's after further review. We do it every day about this time. Let's go around the SEC. Around the SEC, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products, excellence in imaging solutions. The Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, Tennessee has indefinitely suspended junior linebacker Aaron Beasley. Uh, He was accused of animal animal abuse to a kitten. Uh, Tennessee has announced Beasley's suspension. The school received the incident report from the police department. And Beasley will remain suspended from all team activities while awaiting further information. No charges have been filed. Beasley saw action in eight games a year ago and was expected to be a starter this year for the Vols. The Kentucky Wildcats. Freshman Devin Askew, former five-star basketball recruit, has entered the transfer portal. 6'3 guard from California, started 20 games in his first season there in Lexington. Averaged six points and three assists. Askew is the 26th overall prospect in the country this past season. Kentucky has three top 100 prospects entering the program next year. The Alabama Crimson Tide. Bama's 2021 men's basketball recruiting class added four-star center Charles Bediaco on Tuesday, the 26th overall prospect in the country. He chose Bama over Duke, Michigan, Ohio State, and Texas. Tide's recruiting class currently ranked third in the nation. 
This is for basketball, remember. A 6'11 uh, big man played last season at IMG Academy. Transferred there from a school in Ohio, originally from Canada. The Missouri Tigers. And the Missouri basketball team reeled another guard out of the NCAA transfer portal. Ball State's Jaron Coleman, a foot injury sideline Coleman for the first 10 games of this season, but he returned, started the final 10, averaged 13 points, five boards, three assists. He was the MAC freshman of the year a season ago. Now he's headed to Mizzou. Mizzou also announced the addition of Green Bay transfer guard Amari Davis and Kansas State guard Dewan Gordon. And there you have it. That is around the SEC, presented by Gulf Coast Office Products. Shout out to our guy, Trey Beal, and our friends at Gulf Coast Office Products online at gcopnet.com. gcopnet.com for Gulf Coast Office Products. Face-to-face -face sales service after the sale. That's what you get from Trey Beal and the gang over at Gulf Coast Office Products. Um, I got a text from Troy LaBeouf, by the way. Troy says, I'm a 1099. I'm embarrassed losing to you. Been coaching hoops for 30 years. <laughs> Help me out here. Help me out here. What does Troy do that's 1099 here? I don't know. I don't know I, he fills in from time to time for sure. <laughs> He's the greatest guy. I love Troy. Is, is it like some of the high school stuff? Could be. Like Louisiana Prep Weekly and school oh, board yeah, and stuff? I don't Could know. it be Maybe. 1099 for that? Maybe. I don't know. Great guy. But every year, like, it's our whole, it's the Eagle and ESPN staffs. And then there's Troy. And I'm like, what is Troy I love my guy, though. He is to 104.5 what he Chuck Norris is to Ryan Terrio. <laughs> <laughs> it's after further review. Uh, LSU baseball back on the diamond tonight at the box. Uh, they're taking on McNeese. Uh, McNeese has beaten LSU three the last four years. Um, Coached by Justin Hill. I always love seeing the former LSU guys who become coaches have great success. And uh, Justin Hill has done that um, at McNeese. And he has obviously had a very challenging year with the storms that hit Lake Charles and southwest Louisiana this past fall. Just to get back on the field this year is nothing short of remarkable. And they're actually having a pretty good season. Um, headed to Baton Rouge for a game tonight, 6.30 first pitch. Justin Hill's going to join us coming up right after the break. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. Brought to you by River City's One Hour Air, where they're always on time or you don't pay a dime. 752-0001-752-0001 or onehourbr.com. Always love sharing these great reviews. This one came from Sheila Clark on Facebook. She said, I recommend One Hour AC and Heating. So glad I decided to become a club member. It's given me peace of mind. My unit is kept up year round. Anytime I've had an issue, they send someone over in no time. They're always extremely knowledgeable and very professional. That is Sheila Clark's testimonial. I've given you mine as well. Bottom line is they have that standard season maintenance that you should get. It's no different than getting the oil changed in your car. If you want your car to operate at peak performance and last, you need to do. You need to have the oil changed. Same with your home central AC. Right now, just $97 preseason AC tune-up. Call, get it done, make sure your AC is in tip-top shape. 752-0001, where they're always on time, or you don't pay a dime. I'm Jay Dakota. I grew up learning how to cook at LSU tailgate parties and right in my own backyard. And I created JD's Louisiana products to bring that Louisiana flavor to you at home for your backyard cookout. JD's Louisiana barbecue sauce, Louisiana molasses mustard, spicy and sweet barbecue rub, and more are available at your local supermarkets or by logging on to jdakotycom slash shop. Put in promo code CST for 25% off at checkout. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. 
This is Innovating Healthcare at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. of Baton Rouge for attractive offers on the MDX. 50 years ago on Easter Sunday, Rex Baton Rouge Zoo proudly opened our doors and we've been hopping ever since. Five decades of connecting people with animals, teaching our community about the problems facing wildlife and how we can help, and working with zoos across the world to protect endangered species. Today, our future is taking flight by stretching the possibilities of what your zoo can become while we keep it fun and affordable for everyone. Thanks for coming along. Bayou Ford is open for business and we want to earn your business. Stop in and see our selection of the latest Ford cars and trucks, as well as a variety of quality pre-owned vehicles with prices starting as low as $5,000. Bayou Ford will get you the transparent information you're looking for. And when you're ready to purchase your new vehicle, provide the professional service you deserve. Located off I-10 on Beltaire Boulevard. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 2930450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Baseball Tigers off to their worst start in conference play in some half a century. The uh, get right, hopefully, uh, begins tonight. They welcome in uh, the main East State Cowboys to the box, coached by former Tiger Justin Hill in his eighth season at McNeese. Hard to believe it's already been that long. Justin Hill's good enough to join us for a couple of minutes. Coach, as always, thanks for uh, the time. How are you? I'm good, Matt. You doing okay? Man, doing great. I appreciate it. Hey, before we talk about this game, the last time you and I spoke on the show was in the fall. The storms had obviously come through. We were talking about the recovery effort and what it was going to take. Uh, before you came on, I mentioned just the fact that you all are playing ball right now is nothing short of amazing. Can you kind of give our audience an update on what this recovery has been like for the baseball program and the McNeese State community at large. Yeah, um, yeah, it's funny when you when you when you sent me a text about coming over the show, coming on the show. That, that was the first thing I thought about because I remember the, the conversation you and I had, and, uh, you know, right there in the in the aftermath of the storm. And uh, you know, it, it's uh, if you had to if you had to really sum it up in one word, it's it, it's really hard. Um, it's really hard. There's a lot of stuff um, that just you know, not, not, not done yet. You know, life doesn't look normal just yet. I mean, there's, there's so much, there's so much damage that went on and uh, it's been such a challenge to, to get help and uh, construction and federal assistance and those kind of things, not being a major metropolitan area uh, that, that kind of lost in the news. And, uh, but it's been hard, um, but we've got, we've got great people. Uh, I can't, I can't tell you, you know, how, how thankful I am to have a president that has led the charge um, for us as a, as a university and athletic department, the community, um, just to, just to, I mean, we got, we got some classes on campus right now. We expect to be full open in the fall, uh, you know, in the midst of, a, of, you know, hopefully the end of a pandemic, but, you know, two, two storms of the century uh, that, that's come in, uh, that's been nothing short of a miracle. And the work he's done with, with our, with our governor, um, it, it, it's, uh, it, it's incredible. There's, there's so many stories that can be done and, uh, but I think you hit the nail on the head. It is a, it is nothing short of a miracle that what we're doing. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm on a bus right now with a bunch of guys that deserve to be celebrated and everything that they're doing. Uh, we're not going out to just play, play for fun. Uh, we, we, we are able to keep some things in perspective right now. Uh, but we've got a, we've got a, we've got a good club. We haven't played the well, uh, the way we wanted to yet from a consistency standpoint. Uh, but we've got a good club and, um, you know, the goal is to, always to win a championship yeah, we're uh, as you're talking we're playing to be roll of storm footage and some of the damage at the university uh yeah after those those storms it's a stark reminder of everything that you all have uh, have been through justin hill is our guest McNeese, are you, you all are on the bus right now on your way to baton rouge we sure are we just got out of lafayette 
um, and uh, came over to Chapalaya. So we've, we've got a little bit of delay. We wanted to uh, make sure we, you know, I think we just actually ran into some bridge traffic. So uh, we knew that was coming. Uh, but, hey, we're on spring break. And, you know, it's funny, I like, tell somebody, you know, what else would you rather be doing on spring break than uh, than, than playing baseball and uh, no other, no better place to go play it than Fox. Well, so. and no matter what you're doing on spring break, you're going to run into bridge traffic if you're coming or going from Baton Rouge. That's just the nature of it. So either way. <laughs> yeah. uh, Hey, That's right. Who who's going to get the ball for you tonight? Uh, Christian Vega will get the start for us today. Um, he's he's he started on the weekend weekend for us um, this year. Um, you know, he he kind of ran into a tough go at it southeastern this past weekend. He only pitched into the second inning. I think he threw like thirty five pitches. And we you know we played the Thursday, Friday, Saturday mm-hmm. like a lot of people do on Easter. Uh, and so we're just going to get him out there um, and get kind of get him ready for the weekend. So. I don't know how long he'll go, but I mean, we don't we don't really have him, you know, scheduled to pitch again until Sunday. So uh, if he's pitching well, we're gonna let him go. And uh, you know, we, you're gonna probably after that, you'll probably see a cascade of arms uh, coming out. Um, you know, those, those five game weeks are, are certainly a challenge, uh, and us playing those four games on the weekend as well. Uh, so they're, they're, you know, it's, it'll probably look like a normal midweek game, uh, probably after Christian goes out, but. Uh, you know, he has the capability to go out and give us a good start, and uh, we're counting on that. I know people may not remember, but uh, the conference is elected to play four-game weekend series, so you do have a lot of innings that you got to fill throughout the course uh, of a week and certainly of a weekend. For LSU, there's obviously kind of a bit of a shakeup, right? I mean, this normally has been Will Helmers in the midweek. Now Garrett Edwards is going to get the ball because everyone's kind of moved up in the rotation with Jaden Hill's injury, so... What do you know about Garrett Edwards? What's sort of the plan of attack for your hitters against the LSU righty? Well, I know Garrett Edwards is LSU wouldn't have come into uh, wouldn't have wouldn't have come into the picture. He'd probably be wearing blue and gold right now. Really? Uh, that's about that's about the extent uh, that I know about Garrett. He's a he's, he's a fantastic athlete and uh, a good baseball player. Great kid. Great family. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things. Um, I, I can't tell you. I've done a whole lot of scouting um, and, and stuff on LSU. Um, you know, I've, I've seen them enough on TV um, and stuff and just familiar with the program. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're obviously trying to get a few things together just from a pitching staff standpoint, just like all of us are uh, in this time. And, uh, you know, I know you've uh, alluded to kind of what happened with Jaden. And, um, you know, I saw that. I, I kind of saw it unfold as it kind of happened. And, um, and that's, a, that's a fantastic kid, um, you know, and, and, you know, just going to play, uh, play baseball for a long time. But, uh, that, that's a tough one, and, and anytime you see those kind of things, you certainly hate that for a kid, and, uh, coaches, and those kind of things. Because uh, I know those guys work extremely hard uh, to try to do everything you can for a kid um, to, to keep them healthy. But you know, baseball happens sometimes when, once you get in a competitive environment. So, uh, but no doubt he's in good hands, yeah. and uh, you know, we're gonna uh, go try to go try to hopefully uh, maybe they can get go, get things going this weekend. So uh, we'll, we'll try to give them uh, one more day to think about it. Yeah. Bit, hopefully, so. you. Um... You mentioned Garrett Edwards would have been wearing the blue and gold, if not the purple and gold. Did you remind me because it, it's the, if the years run together? But you play so his high school coach was J.C. Holt. You and J.C. overlapped at your time in Baton Rouge, yeah? We did. We okay, did. so uh, yeah, J.C. was fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So uh, fill us in how that whole recruiting process went then with Garrett Edwards. I don't, I don't know this story. Yeah, I mean, as far as for us, you know, J.C. you know shot me a text that hey, I got a guy you may be interested in. Uh, of course, everybody's got video nowadays, so he sh- shoots me some video, a couple things, and looks good, and you're like, man, we need to figure out a way to go uh, try to see the kid, and uh, I remember driving up to uh, Pitkin High School, um, kind of watching, I, I think it was, a, uh, I can't remember exactly the time, you know, it's amazing what, what, you know, what you forget, you know, between, you know, everything that's kind of kind of gone down over the last couple of years, but uh, I just remember going up to him, and, and uh, us and another school were there, and um, you know, just saw him. And it was the first time I set my eyes on him. And, you know, obviously been playing basketball and doing all the, the, the other things that, that really good high school athletes do. And um, and uh, it was kind of a no-brainer after kind of seeing him that and obviously checking off the box with J.C. And, um, you know, we, we tried to make a, a really good run at him. Uh, but I, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think what's uh, you know, Nolan kind of got his falls in a little bit. It's a, it, was a, it was a little bit harder, uh, a little bit harder, you know, hill to climb. Um, you know, so to speak, but um, no, he's he's a he's a good kid, good family. Uh, obviously, comes from a great baseball, um, you know, lineage with with JC and everything. And uh, I know JC's excited for him to uh, wear the same uniform that he did. And, and uh, I tell you, if, if if he wasn't, you know, uh, if I didn't get a chance to coach him, you know, obviously, I'm I'm happy that he's he's going to be there. 
So scored sixty in a basketball game, man. <laughs> like, are you kidding? It's bonk. Did you have a sport when you played aside from baseball where, you, like, you could go out and put up sixty in the basketball game, or like, did you play running back or anything like that? No, no. The only thing I could put up sixty was uh, would be on a uh, on the front nine playing golf. So uh, that was <laughs> Can't about we it. All. Can't we all? Yeah. Hey, um, a couple more before you go. And Justin Hill is our guest, McNeese head baseball coach, Tigers and Cowboys tonight at the box, 6.30, first pitch. Um, you've won three of the last four against LSU. Uh, not a lot of in-state programs have been able to do that. Uh, how have you been able to do that? Uh, you know, I, I think it starts with good players. Um, you know, we got we got good players. And, you know, you know it, it all starts. you gotta, you got to break the ice at some point. You know, at some point you got to, um, you know, it, it's got to be more than a, you you got to you got to go there often, you know. I mean, you got to you got to obviously be played there every year. You know, very fortunate. Coach Maneri still plays everybody. Uh, not every state school does that. Um, and you know, you got to it's got to instead of be a sightseeing tour, it's got to be a business trip. Um, yeah, and I say a business trip. And we're going to play a baseball game. Uh, but the reality of it is, you know, once, once you once you look at and realize none of those kids, um, you know, are, are, are a part of those intimidators uh, out there. Um, you know, I know, I know Buzzy and the guys always like to talk about the ghosts and all those kind of things that are out there. And I, I think they're, I mean, I, and I get it. I understand that. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the box isn't what beats you um, unless you let it. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be the, the nine kids on the field, um, you know, versus the nine kids we're playing and uh, whoever plays the best baseball wins. So uh, hopefully we've, we've been able to kind of put some things in perspective, um, but it all starts with really good players. Um, and then, uh, you know, obviously once you win, you start to get a little confidence and, you know, and for the most part, every one of those games have been extremely competitive and really entertaining baseball games. So, um, so I, I'm sure that's not what coach Maneri wants uh, tonight. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I, I, I get that. I, I, obviously I, I know, I know what they want to do, but, um, I think you got two, uh, obviously really, um, proud programs and, uh, they're going to go compete and, uh, you know, just be, just be a baseball game. Hey, before you go, let's finish uh, where we started. If if people want to help your baseball program or the the Lake Charles community, what what's the best way for people to do that? Yeah, um, you know, I, I think probably the easiest way is to to, to shoot me an email. Um, it's pretty easy. Baseball at mcneese.edu, um, and I can show you how to get involved. Whether it be with baseball, whether it be uh, with the community as a whole. Um, you know, and we can we can forward that to the right thing. Um, you know, I, I think it it would be a little bit easier um, if there was kind of one thing that you know we could kind of rally around, whether it be a stadium or a basketball gym or uh, you know housing or whatever. But uh, I think it would be a little bit easier. But uh, you know, where's the where's the need the greatest? And, and I think having to decide that is, is almost impossible right now. Uh, so. Um, but you know, and, and the other thing I would tell you is, is, you know, if you're if you're somebody's driving through uh, Texas, or uh, I, I don't know if uh, if LSU heads to A and M or whatever this year comes over that way, but you know, fans stop and eat, so stop and go see, and uh, you know, come, come come visit our our, our great city. Uh, I've always said Lake Charles is beautiful this time of year, no matter what it is, and uh, you know, we're 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 trying to get back. Uh, we're trying to get back in the midst of a pandemic. Um, in the midst of people trying to get back in their homes. And, uh, you know, we're really hopeful that, that, that FEMA um, and the federal government will, will step in and help us with housing. Uh, there's some things that haven't come in yet. I, I know our mayor's done a great job of, uh, of, of having the megaphone and doing those things. And, you know, but hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll start to get those things and people can come back. And, uh, you know, we can start building back our great city, our great community, uh, and, and obviously, you know, our great university. So, um, but yeah, if you want to shoot me an email, uh, and I'm, I'm actually pretty easy to find, whether it be social media, Twitter, uh, all those things. I'm not, uh, I'm not TikToking yet, but, uh, <laughs> you can find me on Instagram, uh, Twitter and those kind of things. I'm, I'm pretty easy to find if somebody wants to, to reach out. Justin Hill, McNeese, uh, head baseball coach Tigers and the Pokes tonight at the box at six 30. Good luck tonight. The rest of the season as always reach out if we could ever help with anything. Thank you, Matt. It's always a pleasure. You got it. That is uh, Justin Hill. It is our pleasure. We appreciate the time, especially on game day. I, I know I say this often, but whenever – baseball coaches are always some of the most accessible, and especially on a game day to pick up the phone and do an interview is just awesome. So I'm very grateful for his accessibility, his time, and it's great thought. Just, man, if you're driving through, make a plan just to stop in Lake Charles, somewhere there in southwest Louisiana, and eat, spend a little money. I mean, just help kind of get that community back.
back in Mullen. You know, you, it's it, it's all of us, right? I mean, we all just get back in our routine of life, and you you forget. It's and we've all been through. We've all experienced storms. So you know, if you can, you think about it, man. Stop there in the in the LC, get a bite to eat, shop a little bit, spend some money if you can. All right, it's after further review. We're brought to you by Shabills Tire and Auto Service. ShabillsTire.com. Eighteen locations in South Louisiana. Find the location nearest you at ShabillsTire.com. I want to remind you, maybe if you live on the West Bank of Baton Rouge, somewhere in Brule, Addis, anywhere over there on the West Bank, and you're coming across the bridge to work in Baton Rouge, the Shawbills there in Port Allen is looking for a qualified service technician. So if that's you, why even come across the bridge? Stay there in your hometown. Apply online at ShawbillsTire.com, ShawbillsTire.com, or go in-store uh, and apply. Working at Shawbills has tons of great employee benefits. They give you paid holidays. You get health insurance, dental, vision insurance, supplemental insurance, you get the employee discount. They have a tool purchase program. You get paid time off. You have 401k. I mean, you can have a career working at Job Hills. They care so much about their employees the same way that they care about their customers that have been so loyal for more than 50 years. Shopbillstire.com to find a location nearest you. Apply in person or online at shopbillstire.com. Shopbills, where we keep you rolling. Okay, it's after further review. Um, glad you're hanging out. We'll talk some beer with Fines Walking in about 30 minutes. Also recap the national championship game. In hour three... Uh, Dr. Chip Banks is going to be with us. Uh, he's actually with Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. He's a Saints team physician. He's been a good friend of the show for a lot of years. I wanted to talk to, to Dr. Banks in a little bit about that UCL injury, which, of course, Jaden Hill has a UCL tear. And we hear so often about Tommy John and the recovery and other alternate procedures as well. As Some people decide to do just a, a PRP or stem cell alternate therapies instead of having the Tommy John. We'll go through some of that and kind of how – the rehab, the recovery, the procedures, the treatments have all changed and evolved over the years. So Dr. Chip Bankston with us in Hour 3. We'll talk a little detail about Jaden Hill's injury. So glad to have you aboard with us here. Let me knock out a quick break. We'll wrap up Hour number 1 when we come back. That the viral video that Aaron Rodgers predicted of himself on Jeopardy is now public after that episode aired on Monday. Uh, you will see you next on AFR. AFR. LSU, McNeese, tonight, 6.30. Need a place to watch? If you're not going to be at the box, get by Pluckers. Nicholson just south of campus. Blue Bonnet right in front of the Mall of Louisiana. TVs wall to wall. No matter where you're sitting, you will always have an unobstructed view at Pluckers. Either location, Nicholson or Blue Bonnet. So maybe you're getting to the box tonight. You want to watch the game. Maybe you have an early bite to eat. Then just go right across the street from the Nicholson location to the box. Catch the game. Or if you're going to the box, you want to bite to eat after the game. Get by Pluckers right there. I mean, it is right there outside of the gates there of uh, Alec Box Stadium on Nicholson or the Blue Bonnet location. If you're sort of in the southeast part of Baton Rouge, Nicholson or Blue Bonnet, dine in or carry out. Maybe you want to get there early, stay there late Tuesday. Kids eat free. Spring break for a lot of kiddos. They're driving you nuts already. You need to get out of the house and do something. Get by Pluckers because every Tuesday kids eat free so the whole family can go eat great, eat affordably at Pluckers. Nicholson, Blue Bonnet, dine in, carry out. You don't like our wings. We'll give you the bird. At All-Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all-new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All-Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, we've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All-Star Toyota today. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. To the heroes who are working tirelessly to care for our communities, we thank you. We will never forget the countless hours you dedicated on the front lines, choosing to risk your own health to fight for our friends, neighbors and family members. I mean, you guys are out on the front lines uh, fighting it. We are grateful for your heroic acts and unwavering spirit. Together, we are overcoming this adversity and make our state healthier and more vibrant again. Auctioner Health. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. 
located in downtown Baton Rouge. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. A wrapping up hour number one on AFR. Uh, we told you last week Aaron Rodgers was going to guest host Jeopardy. They filmed the episodes back in February. He has long been a fan of the show, and of course, with the passing of Alex Trebek, they have been sort of, I don't want to say trying out different hosts, but they've sort of been filling in with different guest hosts until they find a permanent replacement for uh, for the legendary Jeopardy host. Well, Al, uh, Aaron Rodgers, who once appeared as a contestant on Jeopardy, on a celebrity edition of Jeopardy, uh, was offered the opportunity to guest host. Well, um, he did, and he gave an interview this past week previewing his upcoming stint as the host, which started on Monday, and Rogers alluded to what he projected would be a viral moment, because as he said it, and I didn't know this, but as the host of Jeopardy, you can see what the contestants are writing as their answer in Final Jeopardy. Well, one of the contestants apparently... uh, took a little bit of a swipe at Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And Rodgers was saying, like, is he actually... This was him retelling the story last week. Is he actually going to do that? I can't believe he's actually going to do it. It said it's surreal watching him write this. Um, And then he's got to read the clue. But uh, this is how it played out on a Final Jeopardy on Monday. You are a two-day champion on the end. Scott, did you come up with the correct response? Who wanted to kick that field goal? That is a great question. Should be, should be, should be correct, but uh, unfortunately for this uh, this game today, that's incorrect, and you're going to lose zero. Thank you for that, and congrats on your two-day win streak. But the man- <laughs> of course, what he's alluding to is in the playoff game against Tampa Bay, uh, in the NFC Championship game, of course, up in Lambeau, there was the moment where the Packers were inside the 10-yard line trailing by eight, and instead of going for the touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie, they kick a field goal thinking they're going to get a stop. Well, they never get the ball back. Everyone immediately just melted on Matt LaFleur, which is a stupid call, but in any event, the contestant there just completely pulverized Aaron Rodgers, and the best part about that has got to be Rodgers just hanging his head like laughing and then agreeing with him. I mean, I guess when you're 37 years old and you're one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time and you have the clout that Aaron Rodgers does, you can go as a guest host on a game show and call out your coach and organization and laugh at it and all good fun. But um, that was the moment that Aaron Rodgers uh, eluded to. Um, I wish I had known what the answer was. They didn't say that. So we don't know what the answer was so that he was providing the clue. That Also, he didn't lose any money. So. Right. 
Well, I mean, that was the whole thing. He knew he right. didn't have it right, so he didn't wager anymore because he was losing it. Was well, no, losing. no, no. You have to put in your wager before you're given the answer. You get the category oh, yeah. for Final Jeopardy. Oh, yeah, yeah. You put in your wager based on yeah. your category. So, so he knew he wasn't. He knew he wasn't. Right. Know. Still, pretty good. Kudos. It takes a little bit of balls, doesn't it? I can say balls, can I? I, I think so. Balls. I mean, because there's the opportunity that that completely backfire. Backfire. I mean, what if Aaron Rodgers gets, like, super pissed? I mean, I guess you have your moment. You shoot your shot. Congrats to Scott. Two-day champion. Who bowed out after those two days? All right, it's after further review. Glad to have you hanging out with us here. Tuesday edition of AFR presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. We'll get you caught up on national headlines from Sports Center coming up here in just a quick second. Uh, after the top of the hour, yes, many, 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 many of you over the weekend tweeted at me this story about the possibility of Kyle Trask ending up in New Orleans. I will discuss that when we come back after Sports Center. AFR. Got to tell you about the Williamson Eye Center and WilliamsonEYE.com because from my perspective, I'm not sure there's a better gift you can give yourself than the gift of sight. If you're someone who genetically has great eyes, awesome. I'm pumped for you. I really, truly am. Um, but not all of us genetically have great vision. And some of us also don't have great hair and are kind of pudgy too. So we kind of struck out in a lot of the genetic uh, lottery uh, pools. But thank God for the Williamson Eye Center. Uh, because Dr. Blake Williamson has helped thousands of Louisiana residents, me included, get the gift of sight. Uh, I was so nearsighted that I could barely see my hand right in front of my face. My prescription was a negative 525, not anymore. I'm seeing 2015 better than 2020, almost two years removed from LASIK. Williamson Eye Center. Williamson. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Have you been issued a ticket for texting, speeding, or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. Oh, hey, what's up? It's Big V and Bubba, 100.7 The Tiger Morning Show. We'd love for you to join us every weekday, 4 a.m. till 9 a.m. Yeah, everything you want in a show. Country music. We got laughs. <laughs> We got celebrity in studio guests. We just need you. Join us every weekday morning, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., right where it all started. That's right. Louisiana's country station, 100.7, the Tiger. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Bayou Ford is open for business and we want to earn your business. Stop in and see our selection of the latest Ford cars and trucks, as well as a variety of quality pre-owned vehicles with prices starting as low as $5,000. Bayou Ford will get you the transparent information you're looking for. And when you're ready to purchase your new vehicle, provide the professional service you deserve. Located off I-10 on Beltaire Boulevard in Laplace. If you need sales, service, or fleet, the crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Le posso offrire un caffè? Le posso offrire un caffè? Andiamo 
Call Mr. Electric today for electrical repairs, upgrades, and installations. Hand injury lawyers. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi. Draft position and the ability to hit the reset button financially were the reasons for the Jets' trade of quarterback Sam Darnold to the Panthers for three picks. This according to GM Joe Douglas. New York expected to draft QB Zach Wilson out of BYU second overall in this month's draft. The Jets will then invest in protecting the man they feel is their quarterback of the future. Notes ESPN's Adam Schefter. They're going to surround Zach Wilson with talent, and the first thing they're going to do in my mind is protect him. I'll be surprised if the Jets don't come out of this draft with at least one and maybe multiple offensive linemen. It's just what they're going to do. They're going to start building around the quarterback. Adam Schefter on Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenti. Schefter reports that the Falcons have received calls from multiple teams and are open to moving out of the number four spot in the draft. Two of the 22 women who filed lawsuits against Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson alleging sexual assault and inappropriate behavior publicly came forward today. Ashley Solis and Lauren Baxley at a news conference. The NFL has been in direct contact with their attorney, Tony Busby, reports ESPN's Ed Werder. With no fees or minimums on checking and savings accounts and an app that lets you bank anytime, anywhere, choosing Capital One is, like, the easiest decision in the history of decisions. That's banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. Capital One and a member FDIC. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. Let's Hour two, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. I'm Matt. Love you, Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. The brain. And the brain got a poop. And Mr. Toby Tom Blake. Uh, we're here. Glad you are as well. Get out there and make it a good one. Feinswag, talking some ball. Actually wrote a book uh, more than a decade ago called Hoop Daddy. Um, it was a collection of stories about basketball fathers and sons. And uh, featured in the book were Homer Drew and his sons Scott and Bryce Drew. Of course, Scott Drew became a, a national championship winning coach last night with Baylor winning the national title. So talk about that with Lee. We'll talk... Um, uh, obviously about the goings-on around the entirety of the LSU Athletic Department with the latest uh, lawsuit said to be filed this time from Sharon Lewis. And uh, certainly we'll talk beer as well. Comings and goings at quarterback in the NFC South. This could be a really fascinating year. The one given is Tom Brady's going to be back in Tampa. Drew Brees out in New Orleans. Teddy Bridgewater could be out in Carolina with Sam Darnold now in. And what about Matt Ryan in Atlanta? He's 36 years old, and the Falcons have the fourth pick in the draft. We know right now the first three picks of the draft are going to be quarterbacks. But could the Falcons take Matt Ryan's successor? That's one of the questions that a lot of people have asked. Could it be Justin Fields? Could it be Trey Lance? Might the Falcons at four take one of the best quarterbacks in this draft? Well, Adam Schefter tweeted on Tuesday, uh, with teams locked into the first three overall picks, the Atlanta Falcons now have received trade calls from multiple teams and are open to moving out of the number four spot per source. That's Adam Schefter earlier Tuesday. Effectively, what that means is that the Falcons aren't interested in drafting a quarterback. Well, I guess if the right guy is there at four, they may take him. But they certainly seem open to moving out and allowing someone else to go into that spot to take either Justin Fields or Trey Lance, presumably, as everyone's expecting Lawrence, Wilson, Mac Jones to go one, two, three. So 
it, it is interesting too. Um, with Atlanta not likely to s- uh, select Matt Ryan's successor, do you realize Matt Ryan's 36 years old? Aaron Rodgers is 37. But there's this perception about Ryan being old and maybe finished, and Rodgers still very much in his prime, um, which I mean, clearly he is, and maybe he is for Rodgers as well, being old. But at, at least with this news from Schefter, it appears as though we know Tampa will go into the season with Tom Brady, and it appears as though Atlanta is going to go into the season with Matt Ryan. So that leaves Carolina and the Saints in the NFC South. Now, Carolina, they've made their decision. They traded for Sam Darnold, and that is very likely going to be their reclamation project. Could the guy that's a former top five overall pick have his renaissance in Carolina around better players and more competent organization? That's the hope for Carolina. The problem for Carolina is a year ago, they gave Teddy Bridgewater a buttload of money. And this year, Teddy Bridgewater is owed $17 $17 million if he's on the roster with Carolina. So the Panthers are definitely looking to move Teddy Bridgewater. They have even told him he's open to speak to other teams about a trade. That's according to Ian Rappaport. The problem is, why would any team in the NFL give Carolina any type of asset to acquire Teddy Bridgewater only to pay him $17 million. There's no shot. What's going to happen is the Panthers, if they designate Bridgewater as a post-June 1st release, they would save $7.9 million. Now, he's still going to cost them, but they could save a bunch of cash if they release him after June 1st, which more likely is what's going to happen. So you're going to have all these teams go through free agency. They'll go through the draft, see how the dominoes fall, and then after the draft, those that still need a quarterback, either a potential starter or a veteran backup, might make a play for Teddy Bridgewater after the Panthers release him June 1st. The Panthers could decide to keep him and have Teddy Bridgewater as a really good backup option to Sam Darnold, but that feels unlikely at this point, considering they'd save $8 million if they release him post-June 1. The question is that a lot of people are asking today, Would New Orleans be interested? And the answer should be, hell yeah, New Orleans should be interested. You could effectively get Teddy Bridgewater back on the same deal you had him on two years ago. Three years ago, let me put it that way. I mean, let's get real here for a moment. I think we all know Jameis Winston is going to be the is the prohibitive favorite to be the starter in New Orleans. We can all agree on that. Everyone out there yelling and screaming about Taysom Hill, like shout at the clouds if you want, ain't happening. We all know what Taysom Hill is. Really good athlete, stinks as a quarterback, will never be a franchise quarterback, period. I've been telling you that for two years. You'll keep wanting to scream about it. It ain't happening in this league. That's why there's no market for him, and there'll never be a market for him. So, do you go into the season with Jameis and Trevor Simeon? With Hill doing his Hill role, which I love, by the way. Love Taysom Hill. Team guy, great athlete. Love him in the Taysom Hill role. Don't love him as a quarterback. Do you go into the season with Jameis, Trevor Simeon, and Taysom Hill? One of all, two years ago, was a starting quarterback this past year in Carolina, knows your division, and you could bring him back in as, at worst, the backup to Jameis Winston. Give me that. All day. Now, if there's an opportunity from, let's say, oh, uh, I mean, maybe New England. Maybe who knows what happens in Houston with Deshaun Watson. Is there an opportunity to be a starter in with the Texans? I don't know. Maybe in Denver, who never seems to be settled at that position. Maybe. Maybe it's Drew Locke. Who knows? Maybe there's that opportunity for Teddy. Or maybe he does what Jameis did and comes back on a bargain basement one-year deal and is a backup and sees next year if he can get an opportunity somewhere on on the market. I would be 100% on board with the Saints bringing back Teddy Bridgewater after Carolina releases him in June to be the backup and say farewell to Trevor Simeon, and then Teddy's on a bargain basement deal as your backup. Or maybe he goes and competes with Jameis and beats him out. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. 
And then there is this story. A Jeremy Fowler of ESPN was at Florida's Pro Day and observed Kyle Trask. And yes, the Saints were observing Kyle Trask, as you'd expect. And Jeremy Fowler went on SportsCenter and said, quote, there was a little buzz that the Saints like him. Trask at Florida's Pro Day. Quote, so they got Jameis Winston and Taysom Hill this year. Maybe they get a guy like Trask, get him in your building development. He can be an option in 2022. They could at least look into that in the later rounds. Now, realistically, when you talk about the later rounds, it doesn't seem like Trask would fall outside of round two or three. He seems to be in that next tier with Kellen Mond and with Jamie Newman after those first five that everybody talks about. So later rounds doesn't really seem plausible. The question is, would you be okay with Kyle Trask coming in as a mid-round guy? Or round two or three guy. Round three with a compensatory pick, I'd be okay with it. That's going to shock a lot of you because you know my feeling on Kyle Trask. But the reality is I feel like context matters, almost like anything. If I go to a great steak restaurant, I don't want a cheeseburger. I love cheeseburgers. Nothing against them. If I go to a burger joint, I would love a good burger. But if I'm going to a steak restaurant, I don't want cheeseburger. Give me a giant cowboy cut ribeye, medium rare. Maybe that thing moo at me. Maybe rare plus let it moo at me a little bit. Fired up for a glass of wine. So I'm talking about. That's my expectation. I like P.J. Williams as a dime back at $2 million. I don't like P.J. Williams as my boundary corner at $10 million. Context matters. You give me Kyle Trask with a third round pick that you can get in your building. Let him sit over there. Maybe learn, be a, a that, that Chase Daniel perennial backup, or maybe even a guy that could start. Listen, it's happened. Mark Bulger was a six-round pick. Mark Brunel was a fifth-round pick. Rich Gannon was an MVP, fourth-round pick. Brad Johnson won a Super Bowl. He was a ninth-round pick. Matt Hasselbeck, perennial playoff quarterback in Seattle, six-round pick. Mark Rippon won a Super Bowl. He was a six-round pick. Hell, Joe Theismann back in the day was a fourth-round pick. Tom Brady, of course, was a six-round pick. He's the great outlier, but... There have been starting quarterbacks in the NFL to come out of the middle and late rounds. Maybe Trask could be that. I don't think so. I think he was the beneficiary of being surrounded by elite talent in that offense in Florida, and I don't think he's going to be a very good player at the next level. But if I could take a shot on him with a mid-round pick, bring him into the building, and let him see what he could develop into, that's much more palatable than telling me you're going to use the 28th overall pick on Kyle Trask or any quarterback in this draft. What do they do? I don't know, but... The Saints have options, and they're going to need another quarterback outside of just Jameis Winston. Because Taysom Hill, if you want him in his Taysom role, you have to have another quarterback so that way he can be that versatile guy because you can't run the risk of him getting injured and then not having a backup quarterback. So who's it going to be? You've got options outside of Trevor Simeon. Maybe it's a guy you're familiar with in Teddy Bridgewater. Maybe it's someone you pull the trigger on in the draft. Time will tell. We'll know in about a month or so. All right, it's after further review. Glad you're hanging out with us here. Let me knock out a quick break. Lee Feinswag will join us next. Talk some hoops and some beer. Stick around. AFR. AFR. Tuesday show is brought to you by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Better coverage for less money. Online at lainsurance.net. Lainsurance.net. Always love sharing great testimonials. How about this one? AFR listener named Kim. They were able to save her $1,619 annually on her own home and auto combined she was also concerned with keeping a $1,000 hurricane deductible, which they were able to do. So they saved her $1,600 a year on her auto and homeowner's insurance and were able to maintain that really low hurricane deductible. Again, better coverage for less money. It is free, 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 free to have them shop for you. You never swipe a card or write a check to Insurance Network of Louisiana. Basically, if they can save you money, you switch. And you start paying a lower monthly premium. LAinsurance.net. Better coverage for less money. Call them right now. 293-0450. 293-0450. or LAinsurance.net. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust. The bank that cares about you. <laughs> Can you feel it? Spring is almost here. And if you've got a new boat for Christmas or you just want to take your boat to a new level, you want front to back boat service, HD displays, live sonar that show the fish before you cast. 
trolling motors at front to back they got not one but two nmea certified techs for all of your marine electronic needs how does a brand new speaker system sound well guess what they do that too so call 225-928-9644 or go to front to back boat service i'm jay dakota i grew up learning how to cook at lsu tailgate parties and right in my own backyard and I created JD's Louisiana products to bring that Louisiana flavor to you at home for your backyard cookout. JD's Louisiana barbecue sauce, Louisiana molasses mustard, spicy and sweet barbecue rub, and more are available at your local supermarkets or by logging on to jdecody.com slash shop. Put in promo code CST for 25% off at checkout. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. of Baton Rouge for attractive offers on the MDX. Have you been arrested for DUI or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-343-1111 or connect with us online at ocbrown.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. After a week-long hiatus, we welcome back Lee Feinswald. How are you, Lee? Well, I guess it'll be a two-week hiatus if I missed last Tuesday, so then, uh, I couldn't do it to you again, so I'm actually sitting in a parking lot in my car. I printed out all the stuff I needed before I left the house Aww. about my beer to make sure that I was uh, there for you. What a guy. I appreciate it. That's what this is all about. Teamwork makes the dream work, camaraderie and all that stuff. Exactly. Can I ask you a question? You t Again, you don't understand how this works, but yes, go ahead. Yes, you can ask me a did, question. As I turned on in the last segment, did I hear you comparing football players to uh, steaks and cheeseburgers? Uh, not really. Okay. It was more a situational uh, analysis. I wasn't comparing the players to to food. Got it. It was more context matters and like I like a cheeseburger, but if I'm at a steak restaurant, I want steak. You know, if I'm absolutely, I, you know, you may like Kyle Trask as a mid round pick, but if I'm picking in the first round, I need I need a dude. That ain't. I'm not sure he's gonna be a dude. Give me a dude. Makes okay. Se Makes I sense? Just, I was just curious. No, great. So now what you've done is uh, you've wasted about that 60 seconds. But the whole audience already heard that. I had to reset it for you now and then for the rest of the audience. <laughs> so you just wasted all that time. See, but that's, that's Lee, as, as selfless as you were doing this in your car, you were selfish in that moment there taking those 60 seconds away from our audience. Thank you. I resemble that remark. Yes, you do indeed. I'm, I'm guessing you were pulling for uh, the Baylor Bears last night? Well... I not partic I mean, I didn't have like a dog in the hunt mm -hmm. and just wanted it to be a good game. And of course, it really wasn't from a competitive end. Um, you know how uh, there have been times when LSU's football team has been spectacular and the defense has been so good and you go, my gosh, I can't believe how quick they close and how hard they hit people. Sure. That, was, that, that was what I thought of when I watched Baylor play last night. I mean, they came out from the get-go like um, wild dogs foaming at the mouth, just so aggressive. And then on defense, 
my gosh, they closed so quickly. They attacked so fiercely. It was, you know, the offense was good, but what they did to Gonzaga to take them out of their game, and uh, what a spectacular group. But, but uh, um, this now makes back-to-back NCAA championships with um, coaches who were uh, featured in Hoop Daddy, my book. I'm so excited. <laughs> the last championship was Virginia in 2019. And, of course, Tony Bennett is the coach there. He was a chapter with his dad, Dick Bennett, and even their sister, Kathy, who coached uh, at Indiana at the time. And, of course, Tony Bennett's wife um, is Laurel. She's from Baton Rouge. Uh, and then last night, the whole Drew family was in the in the book. Of course, Scott Drew, I went to uh, Baylor. He had just gotten that job when we visited. Mm. And um, now I'm going to lay some really local trivia on you about all that. Okay. So Scott's dad... Homer. was the longtime Valparaiso coach, Homer Drew. You sure. know that. Sure. D- Dale Brown's first assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Um, so his brother, Bryce Drew, was born in Baton Rouge. Of course, you know him as the uh, great Valpo player. Remember, he hit that. Made the that shot against called, Ole Miss uh, and then did the dive. Yep. Pacer. Right. And then he was the head coach at, uh, at Valpo, and then he was the head coach at Vanderbilt, and now he's the head coach at uh, Grand Canyon. Do you know who one of his assistants is? Oh, gosh, at Grand Canyon. I don't. Dale Brown's grandson, Peyton. Oh, wow. What a good little factoid. Full, full circle on the uh, on the hoop daddies. And uh, that makes me very happy for all of them. And uh, Scott Drew, you know, took over an intolerable situation there. What he did and what he's done is fantastic. And, um, boy, that was a really, really good team. And, uh, you know, it's just I-, I was stunned at the score. I'm sure you were, too. So I I had Baylor winning the game. Can't like I actually I mean in moment of candor, just being I, I in my bracket challenge I did have Baylor Gonzaga. I don't think that, that was a great stretch. I think they were the two best teams in college basketball this year, and I did pick Baylor to win. But and honestly, Lee, I had it eighty five eighty. So Baylor put up eighty six. I was close there. I didn't think they would so thoroughly restrict Gonzaga offensively. And maybe the bigger point I don't have the box score in front of me. The offensive rebounds for Baylor was just was stunning. How aggressive and athletic they were. It was just a night and day difference with the two of them. Yeah, but you know, that game notwithstanding, Gonzaga's been a beautiful team to watch play this season. Plays the game the right way. With Baylor was so dominant last night. And for the whole season where you and I would talk once a week about the um deficiencies of the LSU team and its offense and how it didn't seem to have a plan when it mattered. Every college basketball team could watch these two teams and say, look at the patience, look at the cuts to the goal, look at the give and goes, look at the working off of ball screens, look how hard they work and how intelligent their shooting was. You know, every team should learn from that. It's a given that you have to crash the boards, that you have to go all out on defense, but, but offense has to be cerebral and hard work, and both of those teams are so good at that. I'll tell you one other thing. Um, uh, let me ask you actually for a thesis here. Because you've, Ooh, probably, you've probably given this some thought. So Scott Drew's been at Baylor since 2003. And as you mentioned, he inherited a, an awful situation where, I mean, you had a, you had a player murdered. I mean, it was right. a, almost un, unthinkable. Um, and he's been there almost 20 years now. And Baylor stuck with him through all of this. And now he's won a championship. Is, is there something to be said for being more patient with with head coaches or is it better to be the opposite and expect quicker results as we've seen in some spots as well well in the case of basketball specifically i mean look at this final four all right you know Mm -hmm. scott drew may look like he's 25 years old but he's not he's in his 50s right or close to it tony bennett the same way um kelvin samson you think about you know he's been through the wars and how, how, how older and much more mature he is as a coach. You normally don't have a coach in the Final Four who's a young buck. Billy Donovan was the big exception at Florida, like the year that in 2006 when uh, Florida, um, w- when LSU went that year. Yeah. You know, and the, and the run that he had, it's, it's really not normal. Usually it's guys who are experienced, who have paid their dues, who have been there a while. You know, so many coaches – you know, Dale Brown would never have survived the first four years at LSU. He ended up being there 25. Mike Krzyzewski 
wouldn't have gotten out of the first few years at Duke in today's world. Maybe at Duke he would, but not in a normal situation. And, you know, I've always said, you don't know if a guy can coach and build and sustain a program through the good and the bad if they're not there six years. Six years is a barometer because that you've had classes come through. You've had guys injured, red shirt, stayed and moved on. And that's how you know in any sport if a coach can build and sustain or take over and sustain. Mm. You know, uh, Les Miles, who, you know, is the gift that keeps on giving now that he's cost three people his job, mm. himself, Jeff Long, and, and uh, F. King Alexander. You know, if you think about it, he took over a really good situation, and he sustained it for the longest period of time. You know, that was, that, you know, again, I was going to stick with basketball, but that's a perfect example of letting him be you know, and, and, and doing what he did until it went south. And evidently, you know, inevitably for everybody, it goes south yeah. at some point or another. Is yeah. that a good thesis? It, it is. Uh, is there any reason in particular why you say six years? Yeah, because a lot of classes, well, in football now, it's a, it, you know, it could be a three-year class. But teams that go to the Final Four usually have seniors, have guys who've been there. It allows for a five-year class. And it gives you a full um, test, if you will, of what a guy can do recruiting and developing people. You know, you brought him in. You know, you, you've had a recruiting class or two. You've seen him go all the way through. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I really know. Yeah. No, that's a good explanation. Um, and then the other side of that, too, though, is I feel sorry sometimes, too, for, for kids who, who coach and have a little bit of success. And they're there one or two years. And then they job hop to the next program. And then they job hop to the next program. And inevitably, those guys don't end up doing well in the long run because they've never built the, built the fundamental base that makes them a good coach and build programs and not just teams. The program is the key. 18 years, um, Scott Drew got his national championship yep. there at Baylor. Yep. Um, if you want to punt this question, you can, uh, because I understand it's sticky and there's a lot involved. But there's you know the lawsuit that's going to be filed, we learned today. Um, from Sharon Lewis against basically everybody. Do you have a... Yeah. No. Well, uh, if you have a feeling, just a, a, a reaction, just go ahead. Well, you know, that story I, was the first thing I saw this morning, and it was there were things about that that jumped out at me, one of which was they put a lot of emphasis that she's going to file a lawsuit. Right. She's going to file this complaint. She's going to do all that. And that's the first story that's come out about all of these things that I, that I thought they jumped the gun. I would have rather the lawsuit was filed. The complaints were filed. It was just, you know, that was what they built it on. That's not to diminish any of the issues and the things that she said. But this, this incredible snowballing of all the things that are going on. I mean, the football coach at LSU, arguably, the, you know, you could argue one of the top three or four most important and highest paid people in the state and, and, and who holds a, a, a place of serious significance made his only statement about this on an AM radio show. And I mean, on an FM radio show in the AM, that's what I meant to say in the AM in the morning. Yeah. And now, you know, and the story is he's not going to go appear before the legislature. He's going to send a letter. What the hell? This whole thing has just made me want to um, just wash my hands and take a shower. Every time I'm thinking about all that's gone on with, with every aspect of this, a friend of mine said the other day, he said, I could never look at LSU football like the, the same way again. And he said, I'm a big fan because this is just sickening. You know, so other people have you said they, it makes you want to throw up. And it really does. It's just gross. And it's just wrong. And I remind everybody about, you know, the sexual assault stuff. Remember, if that was your daughter, your mom, your grandmother, you know, that, this, the two things I never expected was going to come up, you know, this spring was finding out all the stuff about Les Miles and that a grandmother in her 70s, you know, dealt with what she did. I mean, oof. I don't know. I don't know if that's a that's not a punt, is it? No, that's not a punt at all. The only thing I would ask you is, what do you think the end game is? More people are going to lose their job. Uh, more civil suits are going to be uh, filed. More more stories are going to come out, like the one about Sharon Lewis today, who's still listed on the uh, website as an employee of the football department. That was one of the first things I did when I started reading the story. I said, does she still work there? Yeah. You know, I went, she's still on the, on the, on the LSU sports.net website as staff at LSU football. She does. Um, she does in fact still work there. Yep. And I think that, uh, 
I think there's a lot of people who should be worried about their jobs. I think there's and a lot I of- think that Ed Ogeron should get his butt to the legislature if they've called him to the legislature. Yeah. Um, he's not going to be there on Thursday. Um, yeah. But there is a feeling of inevitability around the entire thing. Yep. All right. What's and going all of this no, makes, ahead, me even, makes me so much happier about what you'll transition to next. <laughs> What's coming up on Sports 225 this week? Um, I'm going to catch up for the first time in a few months with my buddy Ron Higgins and talk about some of these things we've talked about and hopefully laugh a lot because that's always what I do with the Mad Dog, and it makes me feel better. You know what else makes you feel better? Tons you got it. of ice cold. Beer. Oh, what is the malted liquor? What gets you drunker quicker? What comes in bottles or in cans? Beer. Can't get enough of it. Beer. How we really love it. Beer. Makes me think I'm a man. Beer. I could kiss and hug it, beer. but I'd rather chug it. Beer. Got my belly out to here. Beer. I could not refuse it. Beer. I could really use it. Beer, beer, beer. All right, take it away. So, Matt, I was at Whole Foods the other day perusing the beer case there and uh, looking at all the different beers. And this is a brewery that keeps popping up second line brewing out of out of new orleans i don't know anything mm-hmm. about them but there was a beer there and it was called pour with vigor and the word vigor was one that uh, john f kennedy always used to use we will move forward with great vigor and i and, <laughs> and i just picked it up and i it said it was a classic czech style pilsner and i love czech beer you know i've talked about budvar before and of course you know oh, there's, yeah. there's other czech beers that, you that was pick budweiser up. right budweiser was budvar did the you? original Bud Bar, you can still get it there. It's fabulous. So I picked this up, and uh, it was pricey. I was, I was, I didn't even know. It's like it's twelve bucks for the six pack, and I was like, Lee, what are you doing? But I was curious, so I took it home. I drank it, and it was outstanding. Oh. It's a really nice beer. It's called Sec- Pour with Vigor, or Pour with Vigor, by Second Line <laughs> Brewing. And um, in their game notes, a classic Czech style pilsner, simple yet elegant, made from European pilsner malt and Czech sauce hops. Lagered to perfection for five weeks. Our first large batch pilsner is named in honor of Charlie Bamforth, also known as the Pope of Foam. And this is in their notes. Charlie is a former professor of malting and brewing sciences at UC Davis. Huh. Somebody's missing the boat not going to UC Davis. You can major in that. <laughs> and is known for telling beer drinkers to pour with vigor to create an aromatic and pleasing head of foam. And so I did, and it was good. So pour with vigor. And you can go back, Matt. You can go, go find... Some old clips of uh, John F. Kennedy the, the talking, and he used he always would say, "We will go to the moon with great vigor." Uh, I will, go. I'll not do that, but uh, I will sample one of these beers. Now I look forward to it. Thank you, Lee. Good stuff. Bye, Matt. That is Lee Feinswag. This is after further review. Stick around. AFR brought to you by Ichiban Essen near Perkins, voted by you. The best sushi and best hibachi in the best of 225 awards. Are you kidding? Not kidding at all. Those uh, awards are going to be doled out again pretty soon. And if I had to place a wager, get odds from Otter later. Ichiban very likely to win again because they do every year. Best sushi, best hibachi. They've got the Moscona roll after all. Give it a try. Ichiban, S and Near Perkins. And from our friends at Ichiban, their newest concept is Boru Ramen, an electric depot on Government Street. What an awesome dining experience. If you've not tried it yet, indoor and outdoor seating, all-weather patio dining. They've got a great courtyard area out front. Pets are welcome. And they're connected with the Sweet Thing Shop, so you can go eat your ramen and then walk right down the hall to the Sweet Thing Shop, get yourself a little dessert as well. It's at Boru Ramen, an electric depot on Government Street.
50 years ago on Easter Sunday, Brex Baton Rouge Zoo proudly opened our doors, and we've been hopping ever since. Five decades of connecting people with animals, teaching our community about the problems facing wildlife and how we can help, and working with zoos across the world to protect endangered species. Today, our future is taking flight by stretching the possibilities of what your zoo can become while we keep it fun and affordable for everyone. Thanks for coming along. Starting in 1974, Central Plumbing has served Baton Rouge and surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Through these tough and trying times, we want you to remember that the Payne family is here to continue to support and serve you. As a multi-generational business, there is no job that is too big or too small. Residential, commercial, industrial, hospitality, we're here for anything you need. 24-7, 365, give us a call, 225-925-8552. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford is open for business and we want to earn your business. Stop in and see our selection of the latest Ford cars and trucks, as well as a variety of quality pre-owned vehicles with prices starting as low as $5,000. Bayou Ford will get you the transparent information you're looking for. And when you're ready to purchase your new vehicle, provide the professional service you deserve. Located off I-10 on Beltaire Boulevard in Laplace. If you need sales, service, or fleet, the crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Le posso offrire un caffè? Le posso offrire un caffè? Andiamo insieme! After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to save 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. As always, appreciate the aesthetic medicine and anti-aging clinics of Louisiana, Blue Bonnet and Baton Rouge, Ambassador Caffrey Lafayette, online, the antiagingclinics.com. Ideal protein, if you want to lose those LBs, your boy's down 21 pounds in less than two months. It can help you as well. Lose that weight, get beach body ready. Ideal protein at the aesthetic medicine and anti-aging clinics of Louisiana. They also got great deals on Vela Shape, Ultra Shape, Vaser, Lipo, those hard-to-reach areas, diet and exercise, can't touch. Those things can, and they're all discounted all April at the Aesthetic Medicine and Anti-Aging Clinics of Louisiana. Baton Rouge, Lafayette Online, the antiagingclinics.com. Um, we will talk in about a little more than 30 minutes from right now with Dr. Chip Angston. Uh, he's the Saints team orthopedist. He is a good friend of the show at uh, from Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. And I want to talk to you about Jaden Hill's injury, that UCL injury, how recovery uh, from that has sort of evolved uh, the treatment for the UCL tear. Uh, here was Paul Maneri, though, uh, breaking the news last night on his coach's show, effectively that Jaden Hill's career at LSU is very likely over. You know, we were still hopeful because he wasn't having a lot of pain out there. You know, we took him out of the game, of course, and the trainer, you know, looked at it, and, you know, we were hopeful that maybe it was just a, a muscle strain or whatever, but our orthopedic doctor came down out of the stands and looked at it, and he was a little bit fearful, and then today, you know, they did an exam, and, you know, unfortunately, the worst-case scenario was, was determined, and he had a UCL tear, so he's going to need to have surgery, and, you know, obviously, the season is over, and he's, he's in for a year-long rehabilitation and you know it's it, it just breaks your heart you know these things you can never predict when they're going to happen and I don't have any doubt that Jaden will recover from this uh, I don't have any doubt somebody will still draft him this summer and they'll rehab him and, and he'll come back from it and he'll have an outstanding professional career but certainly you know this is a disappointing ending to his LSU career. So Paul Maneri uh, alluding to there what I think we all know it I'll be interested to see where a team, as we all will be, to see where a team takes Jaden Hill, because someone will. 
in many instances, you do see guys come back stronger from the from Tommy John. Shoulder injuries are different. You you don't always see guys recover from shoulder injuries and regain their their form, their velocity. The elbow injury, they do. So the prognosis is much better. What does that mean for Jaden Hill? That's something we'll find out. But for LSU, as they progress, it certainly means that you're without one of your big horses on the weekend. So you move A.J. Labus up to Saturday, and it very likely now will be Will Helmers on Sunday. As we know, Garrett Edwards is going to go tonight, taking Helmers' spot as your midweek starter. So everyone just sort of moves up a chair. Um, again, a little more than 30 minutes from right now. We'll talk to Dr. Chip Banks and about that. And then whenever... Um, Pulmonary sets the lineup. We'll go through that as the Tigers play McNeese tonight. They're they're hanging on, y'all. I mean, and honestly, I I want to see this team rally, as I know many of you do. I want to see them put it together throughout the remaining seven weeks of conference play to get into contention for a postseason berth. You get into that SEC tournament, you make a little bit of a run. Maybe it could be something like 2010 where they struggled, and that you know, Anthony Renato alluded to this yesterday. They struggled. They got hot late, won the SEC tournament. Still had to travel in the regional where they went out to L.A. and lost to, to that great UCLA team with Bauer and, and uh, Garrett Cole. But um, it's just better. It's better when LSU's in the postseason. I mean, it's, the season already isn't what we all hoped it would be, but let's see if maybe they can grow up before our eyes and, uh, and accomplish something. Speaking of that 2010 UCLA team, um, UCLA's baseball hats look very similar to – the Boston Red Sox B. It's a it's a blue cap with, um, with that sort of script looking B. Uh, normally, you do see teams in lower levels of competition pirate logos from pros. That's just common, right? You don't often see it the other way, but apparently that's kind of what the Red Sox have done. So. Nike is introducing what they're calling the City Connect uniforms. This is very similar to what Nike's done with basketball, with Color Rush, obviously, in the NFL. Um, And they're unveiling seven City Connect uniforms this year. And by the end of 2023, every major league team will have their City Connect uniform. Well, the Boston Red Sox are going to wear uniforms that have no red in them. Boston City Connect uniforms. Basically looks like the UCLA uniform. It's a baby blue hat with their script B trimmed in gold. It looks like the UCLA hat. The jerseys are gold with blue Boston across the front, which is stenciled. And effectively, they're, it's inspired by the Patriots Day holiday. The jersey will feature the Boston Marathon bib patch on it and on the left sleeve. And the font on the front is a stencil font which is used at the finish line of the Boston Marathon. Um, You know that I'm a uniform guy, and I have very much wanted to do a uni-watch segment here. Too sexy for my love. Too sexy for I didn't intend to do it here, Bray, but I like it. I like where your head's at. What in the hell is Boston thinking? How in the world can you ever, ever... Go away from your traditional colors. You are not baby blue and yellow. You don't get to do this. We don't get to keep bastardizing uniforms. And yes, I am a traditionalist, no doubt. And I'm not saying poo-poo on the younger generations who in college football want their alternate uniforms and stuff like that. The kids like it, I get it and all. But in some respect, you have to at least hold true to what you are. Could you ever imagine LSU running out for a football game wearing black and orange? Why would you? You wouldn't. It's not your color. You're purple and gold. I mean, the uniform itself isn't heinous. It's white pants. It's a gold jersey and a baby blue hat. That combo doesn't look terrible. If you're UCLA, if you're the Boston Red Sox, sack up, wear your uniforms, and tell Nike to bleep themselves. What do you think about that? Am I? Am I? Maybe this could be our poll question. Nothing about it looks right. It's terrible. And I love blue and gold together. Oh 
It's not about the color scheme. No, I know, I know. Oh, it's sexy by just no, no, the font on the shirt doesn't look right. Obviously, the fact that it's not Boston's colors. It's weird to say red socks when red doesn't apply. Oh, terrible. You do it. Let that be our poll question today. You have to include a picture of the uniform somehow in like a like a sequence or something. Oh, I already hate the Red Sox. Now I hate them even more. I'm terrified, though. The Yankees aren't one of the teams, one of the seven, that's going to get their City Connect uniform this year. What are they going to do with the Yankees? It's going to be a manhole cover? Put, like, sky... They'll wear red. Are you going to be skyscrapers? It's like... That could like, look good. Like, I don't want to give them the idea. From the stirrup up to your cap, you're like a skyscraper. You're the Empire State Building, just straight up. Put, like, a pointy hat, like the, like the spire on the building. You're like the Chrysler Building. What are they doing? All right. It's after further review. We're brought to you by Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Hey, Hud, we're orange. How about if LSU wears an alt uniform that's got Hudco on it, you're just orange. Hudcoroofing.com. Hudcoroofing.com. Um, if you've filed a claim with the insurance company and you've been rejected, call us at Hudco Roofing. Uh, as a matter, this happens literally every day. We have two full-time insurance professionals on staff. So what they do is they help homeowners file their insurance claim. Sometimes supplement a claim, whatever it may be. And there's not a day that goes by where we don't see this happen. Uh, It happened earlier today. Someone who was a homeowner had their claim rejected, called us. We had Kelsey, one of the people who works with our, our insurance claims, work on it, go through the supplement process. And today, full roof replacement approved. Let us help you. Hudco Roofing. If you're in Alexandria or North, call our Shreveport office. If you're anywhere along the I-10 corridor, call our Baton Rouge office. You can get the website contact. The phone number's there at hudcoroofing.com. And if you go to the website, hudcoroofing.com, there's Ryan Terrio and me right there on the homepage. You can see our smiling faces with our Hudco hats. Hudcoroofing.com. Do business with someone you know. Do business with me and Terrio and Tilly and all our friends over at Hudco. Hudcoroofing.com. Hudcoroofing.com. Okay, we'll wrap up the hour. Brain will have Tigers and the Pros next. AFR. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, Our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Sports wouldn't be the same without the diehard fans. That's why we're highlighting the fans that do the most. 104.5 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge brings you the Citizens Bank Fan of the Week. Check it out at 104.5 ESPN.com, the Citizens Bank Fan of the Week. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. Oh, hey, what's up? It's Big D and Bubba, 100.7 The Tiger Morning Show. We'd love for you to join us every weekday, 4 a.m. till 9 a.m. Yeah, everything you want in a show. Country music. We got laughs. We got celebrity in-studio guests. We just need you. Join us every weekday morning, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., right where it all started. That's right. Louisiana's country station, 100.7 The Tiger. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. 
Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Master Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Master Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection clean. Service Master Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. Ha ha ha! Can you feel it? Spring is almost here, and if you've got a new boat for Christmas or you just want to take your boat to a new level, you want front-to-back boat service, HD displays, live sonar that show the fish before you cast, trolling motors. At front-to-back, they got not one, but two NMEA-certified techs for all of your marine electronic needs. How does a brand-new speaker system sound? Well, guess what? They do that, too. So After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Okay, wrapping up hour number two. Brain has tigers in the front. Tigers in the pros. They still bleed purple and gold. They're just really rich now. Presented by Kentucky's Best Hemp. Find them online at kysbesthemp.com. Ten points last night for Nas Reed. Reed got 21 minutes of playing time. Also pulled down seven rebounds. Had a steal and a block. Reed, the only former Tiger in action in the NBA last night. So we moved to baseball. Jacoby Jones came off the bench, went one for two last night for the Tigers. Uh, just a single for Jacoby, but one for two is his third hit on the season. DJ LeMahieu went one for two with a double. Also drove in a run, scored a run, and walked twice. Pretty decent night for LeMahieu. Not as good as Alex Bregman, though. Bregman is starting off hot this season. Two for five last night. Looked it up. I know we're less than a week into the season, but he's hitting 471 thus far. Bregman's not doing too bad. That wraps it up for baseball, which means there's just one more note, and that's from the NFL. Happy birthday, Jalen Mills. The former Tiger turns 27 years old today. His hair has been green for a lot less time than that. And that's Tigers in the Pros. Presented by KYSBestHemp.com. KYSBestHemp.com. You seem perplexed. I need to verify this. Jacques Doucet from Double. You can. You thank you. Um, I'm trying to see. Nobody else has this that I can see right now. Um. Jacques just tweeted a screen grab of of something apparently um, it's 
So Sharon Lewis apparently is going to have, uh, forgive me for uh, this unfolding, like literally while Brain was doing Tigers in the Pros, I saw this and it's stunning to me. And I'm, I'm trying to quickly verify. I don't want to just spit something out on air that's not correct. So forgive me for that. I apologize for the long silence and the awkward pause there. Um, but my assumption here is that Jacques screen grabbed this from a an email announcing the press conference. Uh, there's going to be a press conference tomorrow, Wednesday, where uh, involving Sharon Lewis announcing the lawsuit that she's prepared to file against uh, this Title IX lawsuit and civil RICO lawsuit against LSU. She is filing a $50 million lawsuit against LSU. $50 million. I am stunned. Uh, we'll react. Give me a moment. We'll react after Sports Center. AFR. AFR is brought to you by GMFS Mortgage. GMFSMortgage.com. Changing lives since 1999. GMFSMortgage.com. Home buy, refi, construction loans. GMFS Mortgage does it all. Most importantly, right now, what I would tell you. These interest rates at historic lows aren't going to last forever, and I've been telling you this for months and months and months. And we saw, if there's one positive, maybe the only, from COVID-19, it's that we saw interest rates plummet as a means to stimulate the economy. And that means for homeowners like you and me is that we can lower our monthly mortgage payment. We can shorten the life of our loan. We can skip a payment or two when we go through the closing process to refinance our mortgage. It's not going to last forever. Take advantage of the, in some cases, Money in the twos, gmfsmortgage.com. Home buy, refi, or construction loans, GMFS Mortgage and gmfsmortgage.com. At All Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, We've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All Star Toyota today. I'm Jay Dakota. I grew up learning how to cook at LSU tailgate parties and right in my own backyard. And I created JD's Louisiana products to bring that Louisiana flavor to you at home for your backyard cookout. JD's Louisiana barbecue sauce, Louisiana molasses mustard, Spicy and Sweet Barbecue Rub and more are available at your local supermarkets or by logging on to jdecody.com slash shop. Put in promo code CST for 25% off at checkout. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. of Baton Rouge for attractive offers on the MDX. 50 years ago on Easter Sunday, Brex Baton Rouge Zoo proudly opened our doors and we've been hopping ever since. Five decades of connecting people with animals, teaching our community about the problems facing wildlife and how we can help, and working with zoos across the world to protect endangered species. Today, our future is taking flight by stretching the possibilities of what your zoo can become while we keep it fun and affordable for everyone. Thanks for coming along. Bayou Ford is open for business and we want to earn your business. Stop in and see our selection of the latest Ford cars and trucks, as well as a variety of quality pre-owned vehicles with prices starting as low as $5,000. Bayou Ford will get you the transparent information you're looking for. And when you're ready to purchase your new vehicle, provide the professional service you deserve. Located off I-10 on Beltaire Boulevard in Laplace. If you need sales, service, or fleet, the crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you.
Callahan Injury Lawyers. This is Sports Center. I'm Christine Lisi, breaking news. The Nets will be without guard James Harden at least 10 days due to a right hamstring strain. Forward Kevin Durant listed as probable to return from his hamstring injury tomorrow night against the Pelicans. Jets GM Joe Douglas told reporters today the team's trade of quarterback Sam Darnold to the Panthers for three picks came down to two things, draft position and the ability to hit the reset button financially. New York expected to draft BYU QB Zach Wilson second overall at this month's NFL draft. Arnold heads to Carolina, gets a much-needed fresh start. Notes our Keyshawn Johnson. He's in a better place, I think. He won't have to endure the New York pressure of failing to a degree for the first several years of his career. And now he gets an opportunity to go to Carolina and kind of hit the reset button. Keyshawn of Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Zubin Mahenti. Two of the 22 women who filed lawsuits against Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson alleging sexual assault and inappropriate behavior publicly came forward today. Ashley Solis and Lauren Baxley at a news conference. The NFL has been in direct contact with attorney Tony Busby, reports ESPN's Ed Werder. Coming up on Wednesday, who are the top five NBA players under the age of 25? That's right. Does LaMelo Ball make the list? Wait until you hear who made our list. Keyshawn, J. Will and Zubin, Wednesday morning on ESPN Radio. Matt Moscona. I'm very important. After further review. Say one more time. After further review with Matt Moscona. And here we go. ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. <laughs> Live from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. That's right. Hour three, off we go. Welcome aboard. Glad you're with us. AFR, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. I'm Matt. This is Shaq O'Neal, and I hate Matt. Paul O'Neill. They're chanting Paul O'Neill's name. The Brain. And the Brain got a poop. And Mr. Toby Tomplay. All right, we're here. Glad you are as well. Five o'clock quitting time. Glad you are driving home with us. Uh, Dr. Chip Bankston in about 15 minutes uh, from Brock, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. He's the Saints uh, team physician, uh, team orthopedist, uh, who's going to talk with us a little bit about uh, Jaden Hill, uh, Jaden Hill, excuse me, his uh, UCL tear, the recovery there. I'm a little um, stunned. We went to the top of the hour. If you were with us, I saw our friend Jacques Doucet from WAFB tweeted, um, a screenshot of what was what was a press release, and I texted him to see if he could send me the entire press release so I could va- verify. Not that Jock would post anything that isn't true. I, I just needed to see it for full context, and he did. So thanks to many thanks to Jock for sending this along. Um, I mean, this is a press release from the uh, Dash Media. From Dash Media PR, um, Paul, you can pull this up if you want. I know it's it's. I mean, it's black and white and small font. It's not going to be super great on TV, but you can see what it is. Uh, this is announcing a press release, uh, announcing a press conference for Wednesday, where LSU Associate Athletic Director Sharon Lewis will file a fifty million dollar Title IX retaliation and civil RICO lawsuit against LSU alleging retaliation for reporting former football coach Les Miles for sexual harassment. Um, thank you, Paul. The, um, there is a extensive piece which was published today at USA Today where Sharon Lewis and her attorney detail what she alleges is years of retaliation from employees, uh, from LSU administrators against her for reporting Title IX violations. Um, Part of this release one of the attorneys 
her attorney, Bridget Brown, says Sharon Lewis is a hero who stood up to protect the daughters of our state from a sexual predator whom Taylor Porter referred, referenced as Triple X to hide his identity in a 2013 sexual harassment investigation. At trial, we intend to prove LSU acted more like a crime syndicate than the flagship university of our state when it intentionally set out to destroy the professional career of one of the most successful black women in NCAA sports. 11 a.m. tomorrow, uh, there will be a press conference. Uh, for context, um, when Penn State settled with its victims, now remember the context of that story. That was Jerry Sandusky over decades, allegedly, not allegedly, uh, he was convicted of raping children. And Penn State University protecting that child predator. Uh, Penn State settled for $109 million with Sandusky's victims. That number was, I hate to call it a record, but it was, broken by the Larry Nasser settlement at Michigan State, where they settled with 332 victims for $425 million. So while the $50 million price tag uh, is stunning and jarring and all of those things, um, it is a drop in the bucket relative to the Sandusky and Nasser uh, victims' lawsuits. But when you're talking about eight figures worth of, of damages, of requested damages, that is the rarefied air that you are breathing right now. Hey, look, I get it, man. I know a lot of y'all, I, I get it. A lot of y'all aren't super pumped with, with me because I keep talking about these stories as they develop. Someone texted me earlier in the show, uh, to the show text line, and said, man, if you don't talk about it, stop talking about it. See, I don't have that luxury. I don't do the show for me. If I talked about just what I wanted to talk about, I'd talk about MMA and whiskey. I don't think I'd crush it on those two topics, doing afternoon drive statewide in Baton Rouge, or in Louisiana. I got to talk about what you're talking about. And every damn body's talking about this. It's on the front page of USA Today. There's going to be a press conference tomorrow for an LSU administrator who's requesting $50 million in damages. Oh, by the way, Johnson Von Springer from WBRZ is reporting now that the U.S. Department of Education has told WBRZ telev Television that their Office for Civil Rights has opened a direct investigation to examine whether LSU is in compliance with the requirements of Title IX. Let me, let me simplify that for you. The federal government is investigating LSU now. They've confirmed it. See, all y'all want this to go away. All y'all want this just to disappear. Like if you stop talking about it, it's going to stop happening. But the federal government is now, has now confirmed they are investigating LSU. You got a current administrator, by the way, She's still working at LSU, Sharon Lewis, who's filing a $50 million lawsuit against LSU. You got a state Senate committee who requested the presence of 10 administrators, including head football coach Ed Ogeron. And what Ogeron and Scott Woodward today did was release letters, as I told you yesterday we're going to do, responding to their request from the committee in light of appearance. So they won't appear before that Senate committee they wrote letters explaining themselves. How dense, how naive. Like, do you not realize? Does, does anybody still not realize the gravity of this? Is there anyone out there who still doesn't get it? I mean, I'm, I'm sure there is, based on 
the text messages I get into the show, the, those of you that at me on Twitter and email me, it's not a media creation. You have a 400-page report that took months to accumulate, documents, witnesses. The president at LSU has openly said, we failed to protect those we were entrusted to protect. The U.S. Department of Education is now investigating you. You got an, an, an employee filing a $50 million lawsuit against you. And there are still people going, hey, man, it's a witch hunt. Are you blind? Like, people are going to lose their jobs. It should have happened months ago. But LSU's unwillingness to be proactive is now painting them in this light where even though the mountain of evidence continues to build, that snowball keeps rolling down the hill, they keep looking going, no, nothing to see here, we're all good. Hey, UCLA, September 3, get ready. Or is it September 4? I don't know. Hmm. I'll say it again. This ain't over. Should be pretty obvious now if you were questioning. All right, tap further review. Whew. Okay. Um, let me knock out a break. We'll come back. Um, Dr. Chip Bankston. Well, I mean, hell of a transition. I don't know. This is just an awkward transition. I don't know how to do it. Uh, Chip Bankston is going to talk with us next about Jaden Hill's injury. It's AFR. AFR. AFR is brought to you by Pinnacle Exterior Construction. One of our great new sponsors here. I tell you, man, Shane Danton. What an awesome guy with a great vision. Uh, he builds beautiful properties. Pinnacle Exterior Construction. If you want to make your backyard a show place, Pinnacle Exterior Construction can help. Look for that Pinnacle Green. You'll see the sign all over the place. Check out their website, Peck Built, P-E-C Built, P-E-C Built.com, P-E-C Built.com. You want that beautiful custom pool? Pinnacle can do it. You want that outdoor kitchen? Pinnacle can do it. You want an arbor, fence, deck, bulkheads? Pinnacle can do it. Pinnacle Exterior Construction. Take that boring backyard and make it a show place. Make it your palace. Pinnacle Exterior Construction. They have financing available. They can control the, control the schedule and give you better pricing because they don't use subcontractors. Pinnacle Exterior Construction. Check out their pictures or get a free consultation. PECbuilt.com. Starting in 1974, Central Plumbing has served Baton Rouge and surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Through these tough and trying times, we want you to remember that the Payne family is here to continue to support and serve you. As a multi-generational business, there is no job that is too big or too small. Residential, commercial, industrial, hospitality, we're here for anything you need. 24-7, 365. Give us a call, 225-925-8552. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. 
Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to LAContractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. Oh, hey, what's up? It's Big V and Bubba, 100.7 The Tiger Morning Show. We'd love for you to join us every weekday, 4 a.m. till 9 a.m. Yeah, everything you want in a show. Country music. We got laughs. We got celebrity in studio guests. We just need you. Join us every weekday morning, 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., right where it all started. That's right. Louisiana's country station, 100.7 The Tiger. Bayou Ford is open for business, and we want to earn your business. Stop in and see our selection of the latest Ford cars and trucks, as well as a variety of quality pre-owned vehicles, with prices starting as low as $5,000. Bayou Ford will get you the transparent information you're looking for. And when you're ready to purchase your new vehicle, provide the professional service you deserve. Located off I-10 on Beltaire Boulevard in Laplace. If you need sales, service, or fleet, the crew at Bayou Ford is going to... After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. Paul Maneri confirmed the uh, really just disappointing news. Jaden Hill torn UCL. That's the ulnar collateral ligament. That's usually what's associated with Tommy John. I uh, wanted to bring on our friend Dr. Chip Bankston from Brock Batner's Orthopedic Clinic uh, to explain a little bit not only about the injury, but the rehab, the recovery, and uh, some of the advancements therein. Uh, Chip, what's up, man? Thanks for the time. How are you? I'm doing great, Matt. Thanks for having me on, man. Our pleasure as always. Normally when we're talking, we're talking you know, Drew Brees with collapsed lungs or combine stuff. Uh, we don't usually talk UCL. Is this a – this is a – Pretty baseball specific injury, or is it not? Well, you, you see it in in overhead athletes. Um, you can see it in javelin throwers. You can see it in baseball players. Even people who have like a significant torque, like a swimmer trying to hit the hit the wall, can sometimes have an elbow injury like this. But vast majority of Tommy John injuries, UCL injuries, are going to be in in pitchers and overhead throwers on in baseball. And it's um, it can be really pesky. You can have a mild sprain that can sometimes just resolve itself, and then you can sometimes have chronic symptoms that lead to an acute tear and you end up having to have sur- uh, surgery. And it, it's a it's challenging. It really is. It's it's a pesky injury. We're familiar, obviously, with with the UCL, with Tommy John in baseball, because it's just become mm-hmm. sort of common. Um, how has treatment for this injury changed? Let's say over the last, let's say over the last decade. Well, you, you, over the last decade, you've had some increased interest in some of these biologic type injections. You'll hear people talk about platelet-rich plasma mm-hmm. or "quote unquote" stem cells to try to trigger some type of healing response or a ramped-up healing response when you've got some of these mild sprains. You've seen a little bit more of that used in the last probably 10 years as opposed to it was just rest and anti-inflammatories and rehab and a return to throwing program. Another thing that you've seen over the last 10 years has been really in the last five years, there's been some interest instead of really reconstructing the Tommy John ligament, but to go back and actually trying to repair it. The early results of repairing this ligament haven't been that great, but there's been some increased interest as well as some in kind of newer techniques on repairing it. I'd say that the vast majority of repairs are really in kids that are younger age, probably high school age, maybe early college. Most professional athletes or nearly professional or soon to be professional athletes aren't, aren't talking about doing a, a, a ligament or UCL repair in the elbow. 
they're really talking about if they have to have surgery, having a reconstruction. Mm. Um, and the technique that, that uh, Dr. Joe, fellow that's now deceased, but was the man who really pioneered the Tommy John procedure on Tommy John himself, um, the technique that he described back in the, really the 70s and 80s is pretty similar to what we do now from a reconstruction standpoint. There's some small alterations on it, but it's about the same procedures. Um, but it's, you know, Tom, there was, they gave the name Tommy John because it was the first procedure he had done it on. Dr. Joe had done it on. And really they didn't report those out, the, that, that procedure and the success that they had with it for almost you know five to 10 years. Cause he didn't do very many of them. And they were they initially had a, a little bit of problems with the procedure until they perfected it and then they presented it and then they published it. And it wasn't until like a good bit after Tommy John's car, uh, career was he returned that they actually started reporting this procedure. So, mm. you know, it's taken off. I mean, there's the book, the arm that was uh, written by one of the Yahoo sports doc, uh, sports, um, uh, I think authors. And they, it was a great kind of insight into the world of what, what has become, Tommy John and UCL Reconstruction. Um, I recommend it, reading it. It's a good book. So for for Jaden Hill, you heard pulmonary, or we heard pulmonary last night say it's likely a year-long recovery process. Has that changed, like, for example, with ACLs, right? I mean, ACLs at one point were just a, a completely devastating injury. Now we see guys come back in four to six months at times. I'm not saying that's standard, but we've seen it. Um, what about this? Yeah, I, I think what Coach Maneri told you is, is correct. And and if you look at the return to play or return to pitching, you probably have an 85 to 90 percent. Uh, that's where the literature is in terms of return to play or return to throwing at the same level or higher. Um, that's probably on. That's from Dr. Andrews' published literature and those from Dr. Elitrosh and other, other kind of higher volume doctors and surgeons around the country. And it, it still is probably, a, I think a year. And even then, I mean, you, you probably remember Steven Strasburg yeah. came back from a UCL reconstruction and he was on a pitch count for that first year or an inning count, I think. And he, they got all the way into the postseason and they basically shut him down. <laughs> they did. And so, I mean, and, and, and I think that's important because you're probably, it's like a, I think an ACL is somewhat of a similar situation in that it probably takes you a year to get fully rehabbed from an ACL reconstruction, maybe nine to 12 months for a knee, but then you probably still make some functional gains and strength gains even out to maybe two years out from an ACL. And the same thing could probably be said in a professional athlete, uh, all the, or a you know, high level collegiate player, all of a sudden you've been pitching your whole life and now all of a sudden you're not pitching for, without any significant volume for six months, it probably takes you a while to ramp up and then to try to get into form and be consistently strong, even a little bit longer, which is why you've had some people in the professional realm start saying, okay, well, they're, they've, they've rehabbed, they've recovered from their surgery. It's been 12 months. They're, they're re released, but some people have continued to kind of keep an eye on, on those, those throwing athletes. And that was kind of what you saw with Steven Strasburg and trying to have some, all right, you're not going to just let them go full bore, full go. Mm -hmm. You may kind of try to put them on some type of pitch count. And I think that may be just in the sense, hey, look, this was a – Strasburg was a marquee high-level player, and you wanted to make sure that this franchise player didn't necessarily get overworked in his first season back. Speaking of franchise player, if someone was going to draft Jaden Hill in the top 10, which was where he was projected, that would be the assumption, is that they're going to pay him a lot of money because they expect him to become a franchise player. <laughs> I know you can't speak specifically to Jaden Hill because I'm not sure that you've examined him or even if you can, but if if you were advising a team on a standard, if there is such a thing, UCL tear, what would what would you tell them going into the draft about a prospect like this who was coming off this injury? You know, I, I think, you know, look, and I, I haven't treated Jaden, and I don't I don't know him, but I know he's obviously he's a very talented uh, uh, pitcher. Um, look, I, I would advise the team. Look, you draft this guy. You're, you're think of this as as you have an, a, you're having a full year for him him to rehab and recover. There's a chance you have him a full go at the time of April 1st when baseball season starts, um, but you may not. And I, I think you have you know a reconstruction of a night with a 90% return to play is still really good. And now 
from what I've heard about him, that this guy was unbelievably talented, like touching 100 in fall ball and some of the LSU baseball players that would come back from, you know, playing in the minors and majors said, this guy was really hard to hit. And, and that's, you know, that's says a lot. That's, mm-hmm. that's an impressive player. And so, you know, he should very well have a very good chance of coming back, you know, rest from what I've been, what I've heard from reports in the media is his rest of his elbow is, is normal outside of his, his Tommy John ligament. And so I think that's a good sign that this guy gets well, he recovers, he rehabs, and he, he should have a, a, a very good chance of having a productive professional career. That's great to hear. Um, the last thing, we do hear sometimes guys come back from Tommy John and they're throwing harder. How is that possible? Well, I, I, maybe it's a period of, of rest for a period of time. You know, a lot of, a lot of, of, of players that, that end up injuring their, their Tommy John ligament, it, there's a lot of things that lead to the ligament being injured. And so you know, think of this, when you're you know, a collegiate level or high level pitcher, elite level pitcher, the angular velocity, the, how fast is your arm rotating when you're at maximum acceleration? It's 7,000 degrees per second. So just sit back and think about that. 360 degrees to go around a circle. And in a second, you're moving so fast as a pitcher when you're moving you know, at maximum acceleration, that's almost going 20 times around in a second. Jeez. It's insane to think about that, but <laughs> that's is. how fast it is. And really, if you were to take that angular velocity and actually the stress across the ligament and you were to just put it into a machine and test the ligament, you should rupture your UCL every time you throw. But you have all these other things that go into the power of a, of a throw and to the decelerate the arm and protect the Tommy John, whether it be some of the muscles around the ligament, how your rotator cuff works, how your core works. And so, you know, when you reconstruct a Tommy John ligament, you're putting a tissue in there that's usually actually substantially larger and thicker than the actual ligament that you were born with. And so I, I think it's some, somehow you're probably resting and rehabbing and maybe correcting some, some underlying could be mechanics, could be core weakness, could be rotator cuff strength weakness, some of these things that can sometimes put more stress on your Tommy John ligament. So part of the rehab isn't just, hey, let's get your elbow strong. It's your, really your whole body two-thirds to three-quarters of your power and throwing comes from below your shoulder. And if that's not normal, you're going to put more stress on the shoulder. You'll have more downstream issues like in the elbow. Yeah. So I, I really hope I, this, this young man was apparently just a very talented kid and a young man. And I just hope the best for him. And I hope he, he gets gets fixed up and gets back onto the road to recovery because it's such a, you know, it's a devastating injury for a pitcher and who's got a lot of promise, but he should be able to return, you know. Well said, Dr. Chip Bankston, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Of course, he's the Saints team orthopedist. Good enough to spend a couple of minutes with us here talking about Jaden Hill's injury. Man, I appreciate it as always. We'll visit soon, okay? All right, man. Off to the Combines this weekend. Take care, man. We will probably talk after that, I would guess. Thanks. All right, right. Later, buddy. All right, be well. Uh, Dr. Chip Banks, he's the one who did my my meniscus surgery a couple years ago when I had my knee injury. So he's, he's, I mean, he's obviously... He's the Saints team orthopedist. He's pretty good at what he does. Dr. Chip Banks, and we appreciate him. All right, it's after further review brought to you by South Point Volkswagen, southpointbw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online at southpointbw.com, southpointbw.com. I was actually having a conversation uh, just yesterday with someone who was looking for a new vehicle and was test driving, actually test driving uh, three different vehicles, a, a sedan, uh, a, a SUV like the... Uh, like the like the Volkswagen Atlas, and then a big, giant, oversized, mega SUV, and really was loving the Atlas. And the point that I would make is, you know, er- Erica, we, Eric and I both drive an Atlas now, which is the three row seven seater family SUV. And she drove a, a she drove a Yukon before we we got the Atlas. It was before Volkswagen offered the SUV. And what was amazing is the measurements actually of the Atlas. The interior space and the storage space is bigger than the Yukon. It's just not on a truck chassis, so it just doesn't sit as high as you would like if you're driving a truck like like that vehicle. So for all the the, the spacious interior, the storage space, and we go on vacation, it's all there. Amazing drive, tons of technology. It's the Volkswagen Atlas and about half the price. Check it out, southpointvw.com. New and certified pre-owned in Baton Rouge and online, southpointvw.com, Southpoint Volkswagen. What's your direction? All right, so uh, LSU, of course, going to move forward without 
Jaden Hill for the remainder of, the, of uh, the season, and very likely, as Paul Maneri alluded to, Jaden Hill's career is over. Well, life without Jaden Hill uh, begins for the Tigers here tonight, uh, one hour from first pitch, LSU and McNeese. Still waiting on the lineup to be posted. If it is, in fact, posted before we get out of here, we will certainly run through that lineup uh, and give you our thoughts on LSU and McNeese as they set it up. And uh, Gio Giacomo could very well be back tonight, Paul Maneri alluded to. So we'll get to that as we continue. Otter Locks here in about 15 minutes from right now. Glad you're hanging out on a Tuesday edition of AFR, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Stay here. AFR. Of course, Dr. Chip Bankson was just with us, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, and they do operate in conjunction with our friends at the Baton Rouge General Hospital, brgeneral.org, brgeneral.org. Of course, selective procedures they have, the Mako robot that you hear me talk about all the time for knee replacement or joint replacement surgeries. That's all there at the Baton Rouge, uh, at Baton Rouge General Hospital, part of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. But they're also, of course, caring for Baton Rouge uh, and the surrounding area. The COVID-19 vaccine is available. If you want to reserve your shot today or learn more, you can. brgeneral.org. Use that as a great resource right there on the homepage, brgeneral.org. Right on the homepage is the info about the COVID-19 vaccine. So if you want to get those FAQs answered, you can. More than 27,000 Baton Rouge uh, residents vaccinated now at the Baton Rouge General Hospital, and you could be next. To protect you and your family, if you're interested in learning more about the vaccine or scheduling your shot, you can do so at brgeneral.org. brgeneral.org. isn't just another day it's so much more kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer heart and kidney specialists with multiple primary care locations around baton rouge same day appointments and online scheduling we're relentless about keeping you healthy auctioner baton rouge innovating health care for kelly Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. Ha ha ha! Can you feel it? Spring is almost here, and if you've got a new boat for Christmas or you just want to take your boat to a new level, you want front-to-back boat service, HD displays, live sonar that show the fish before you cast, trolling motors. At front-to-back, they got not one, but two NMEA certified techs for all of your marine electronic needs. How does a brand new speaker system sound? Well, guess what? They do that too. So call 225-928-9644 or go to front-to-back boat service. I'm Jay Dakota. I grew up learning how to cook at LSU tailgate parties and right in my own backyard. And I created JD's Louisiana products to bring that Louisiana flavor to you at home for your backyard cookout. JD's Louisiana barbecue sauce, Louisiana molasses mustard, spicy and sweet barbecue rub, and more are available at your local supermarkets or by logging on to
after further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. So Ed Ogeron was a guest on Off the Bench with uh, T-Bob and Hester uh, this morning. And um, they did not talk at all about any of the off-the-field stuff going on. Uh, But they did talk about spring practice as it continues. And they did delve into the quarterbacks. And it was interesting to hear who uh, Ed Ogeron led off with. But then also the guy who he continues to prop up is having a really good spring. Yeah, competing. Yeah, and on Thursday, Miles Brennan had the best day. Okay. Uh, he came out, he came out, and uh, him and Max were battling. TJ's right there. You know, Garrett, Garrett knows why he continues to make plays. It, it's a, like a wild factor. Like, like he'll scramble to his left and throw an underhand to his right across the field and make it. It's like, God, did I just see that? But, he, <laughs> you know, he, he, he has tremendous skills. He's a great young man. He's a great competitor. I'm happy with all four quarterbacks. Obviously, one's going to have to start. It's a battle right now. So he led off with Miles Brennan and gushed about Garrett Nussmeyer, the freshman. And Ed o- and listen, Mike Dettelier, when he's been with us on Thursdays, has pointed this out. Every time Ed Ogeron has an opportunity to talk about the quarterbacks, he gushes about Nussmeyer. I don't think anyone realistically expects Nussmeyer is going to play as a freshman with three veteran quarterbacks ahead of him, but certainly building him up toward the future. Um you know, there were, I was kind of digging back through this today because I think several, actually, I don't, I really don't know this for sure. I, my assumption is that most LSU fans probably think that Max Johnson will be the quarterback. Uh, I, maybe, maybe not. It just maybe feels that way uh, because of how he finished the season and, the, you sort of look toward the future, and I, I kind of understand that. But what was really interesting is that I went back and looked at the three quarterbacks, Brennan, Johnson, and Finley, and I, I give it in that order because that's actually how they finished in in total yards from last season. And when you look at the three of them, they were almost identical in many of those statistical categories. Uh, Brennan had 131 attempts. Johnson had 150 attempts. And Finley had 140 attempts. I mean, all three of them essentially had the same amount of attempts. Brennan threw for about 1,100 yards. Johnson just over 1,000 yards. And Finley, 941 yards. Brennan led in yards, uh, completion percentage, average yards per completion, and had the most touchdowns, uh, passing touchdowns on the season. It's interesting that we kind of maybe assume that Max Johnson's going to be the guy where Brennan, in limited activity, actually had the best season statistically of the three. Um, The one difference, I would say, is that Johnson had eight touchdowns to just the one interception. And that is impressive because when you go back and look at the, the true freshman quarterbacks that have started for LSU, look at like the last decade, Miles Brennan, who didn't start that game against Troy as a true freshman, but played and started the second half of it, if you remember, was four of seven with a touchdown and a pick. When he threw the pick, he came out. Brandon Harris, in 2014, started as a true freshman at Auburn. Three of 14, they yanked him. He didn't play again. A year before, Anthony Jennings started the bowl game. Remember, Mettenberger had the injury against Arkansas, and Jennings started the bowl game. 7 of 19 for 82 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. Different offenses, I'll grant you. But the point is, you don't usually see freshmen have great seasons or big statistical performances at quarterback, true freshmen. And Max Johnson had that. But so did Miles Brennan. So I legitimately do believe Ed Ogeron. When he says, it is a competition, we're grading every rep, that's what they did when... When Burrow came in that summer of 2018, they graded every practice rep, and whoever graded out the highest played, and it ended up being Burrow. They did the same thing this past year. We all assumed Max Johnson was going to be the guy, and when Brennan got hurt, they went into that practice week. Remember, they were supposed to play Florida. It got delayed, so they had two weeks before they played South Carolina. They graded every rep, and we all thought Johnson was going to be the guy, and they started Finley because Finley performed better in practice. 
So I legitimately believe that's what they're going through right now. And I, when Ed Ogeron says Mac, Miles Johnson, Miles Johnson, Miles Brennan, Max Brennan, Miles Brennan had his best day on Thursday. I believe him. And I, I do think as odd as this is going to sound, the guy who has the best chance of starting at UCLA is Miles Brennan. I also believe the guy with the highest percent chance of transferring is Miles Brennan. As odd as that may sound. It's a weird juxtaposition. And it is fascinating to see how this might all play out between now and uh, September when LSU goes out to UCLA. It's after further review. The uh, LSU baseball uh, lineup for tonight has been posted. I'll get to that in a second. Let me remind you about Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Michelle.com, 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 Michelle Weighing and Measurement. In Harahan, they've been around since 1947, but they have expanded so far beyond just our state borders. 11 states, 29 offices. So even if you're listening outside of Baton Rouge or outside of Louisiana or watching us on CST, Michelle could very well service you. Michelle.com. They are ISO 17025 accredited, but they also do a lot of standard calibrations as well. So if you're in any of the dozens of industries that they serve, where you weigh or measure something, they sell, rent, and service the tools that you need to weigh and measure. It's Michelle.com. Check them out online. It's a great resource, the website, Michelle.com. Michelle.com. M-I-C-H-E-L-L-I. Michelle.com. Even though they've gotten so big, they still prefer to conduct business face-to-face. That's how they win so much business. Michelle.com. It's a great resource. Check it out. Michelle.com for Michelle Weighing and Measurement. Um, okay, here's the LSU starting lineup for tonight. It has been posted. LSU and McNeese. Reminder, uh, McNeese. McNeese has won three of the last four against LSU in this series. Uh, former LSU Tiger Justin Hill is the McNeese head coach who was with us in hour one today. You can catch that chat. But here we go. Dylan Cruz back in the leadoff spot. He'll play right field. So they'll go Cruz Morgan Duga. Drost back in the lineup as the DH. He'll bat fourth. Jordan Thompson will play short and bat fifth. Kay Doty will bat sixth and play third. Uh, Gio DiGiacomo, back in the lineup as Paul Maneri alluded to. He'll play center and bat seventh. Hayden Travinsky will catch, as we've seen largely in the midweek, um, given a day off for uh, for Alex Malazzo. And then Zach Arnold in the nine hole and playing second base. I love that. And I've been talking about this a bunch. And it's no slight to call your Cranford. It's... Where you are deficient right now is you need bats in your lineup. Zach Arnold is a bat. And second base is the easiest defensive position to play. And you had Arnold at one point this season playing shortstop, so certainly he's capable of playing second. You could literally underhand the ball from second to first if you need to. So give me that bat in the nine hole, especially if you're going to bat Cruz in the leadoff spot. So that way, when Cruz is up, you have a better chance of having guys on base when Cruz gets up, so he's in a run-producing position. So Cruz, Morgan, Dugas, Dross, Thompson, Doty, Giacomo, Travinsky, Arnold, your starting lineup tonight for LSU against McNeese. Tigers try to get a win before they head to Kentucky for a Friday, Saturday, Sunday series against the Wildcats. Hopefully LSU can get back on track, and hopefully it starts tonight against the, uh, the McNeese State Cowboys and I also am going to be interested with uh, Garrett Edwards on the mound tonight as the starting pitcher, how he performs. Edwards, remember, was the first pitcher out of the bullpen this year and had gotten a midweek start early. But he had moved into that closers role when Fontenot struggled. Well, now with Hill out, Labus moving up to Saturday, very likely Helmers moving from midweek to your Sunday guy. That means Edwards now is your midweek starter. Let's see how he does in that role tonight on the bump uh, for the Tigers. Okay, uh, you're about 47 minutes away from first pitch. You can hear it in Baton Rouge on our sister station, Eagle 98.1. All right, final break of the show, y'all. When we come back, Otter Locks. What are we betting on tonight? We'll find out next. Stick around. It's AFR. AFR. Of course, I love telling you about Clegg's Nursery. Buy local, shop local at Clegg's Nursery with four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area. So no matter where you are in the greater Baton Rouge area, you are never far from a Clegg's Nursery location. Segan near Airline. LA-16 in Denham. By the way, there's not another garden center within a five-mile radius of that Clegg's on LA-16 in Denham. You know exactly where it is if you live in Denham. Mid-City on Donmore. You turn off of Florida on on Donmore. It's right there on the corner. And, of course, their giant garden center with all those greenhouses up on Greenwell Springs. So, no matter where you are in the greater Baton Rouge area, Clegg's is near you. It is a great time to plant. 
Spring is upon us. Beautify the exterior of your home and all those outdoor spaces with Clegg's Nursery. And remember, if you're doing that spring cleaning and you're checking off your honeydews, whatever you'd find at a True Value hardware store, you'll also find at Clegg's Nursery. Four locations in the greater Baton Rouge area for more than 60 years. Buy local, shop local, and tell them Matt sent you in to Clegg's Nursery. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. of Baton Rouge for attractive offers on the MDX. 50 years ago on Easter Sunday, Breck's Baton Rouge Zoo proudly opened our doors and we've been hopping ever since. Five decades of connecting people with animals, teaching our community about the problems facing wildlife and how we can help, and working with zoos across the world to protect endangered species. Today, our future is taking flight by stretching the possibilities of what your zoo can become while we keep it fun and affordable for everyone. Thanks for coming along. Starting in 1974, Central Plumbing has served the Baton Rouge and surrounding areas for all of their plumbing needs. Through these tough and trying times, we want you to remember that the Payne family is here to continue to support and serve you. As a multi-generational business, there is no job that is too big or too small. Residential, commercial, industrial, hospitality, we're here for anything you need. 24-7, 365, give us a call, 225-925-8552. It's no secret, the best oysters in Baton Rouge are at Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar. Enjoy mouth-watering South Louisiana flavor and oysters from all over the country. And don't forget our nightly drink specials. Jolie Pearl Oyster Bar, located in downtown Baton Rouge. Have you been arrested for DUI or other traffic violations? Have you made a mistake? We all have. You're not a bad person. Call the law offices of O.C. Brown at 225-3-FEET. After further review with Matt Moscona, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana, call for a free quote to see how much you can save. 293-0450. After further review with Matt Moscona, ESPN Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Alexandria. All right, final segment here on a Tuesday edition of AFR, presented by Insurance Network of Louisiana. Better coverage for less money. That's what you get with Insurance Network of Louisiana. 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. All right, LSU baseball and Benice, 42 minutes away. Only one thing left to do here before we bid you adieu for the evening. Time to find out what we're betting on tonight. It's time for Otter Locks. Otter Locks. Otter Locks. We welcome aboard the winner of the 104.5 ESPN and Eagle 98.1 Bracket Challenge. Jimmy Ott finished uh, a hair ahead of your boy. Um, so you won the professionals division and I won the amateur division. Yes, I'd like to thank all of my team. You know, mom, you see me, uh, you know, everybody, my dad, you know, son, everybody contributed to this award, you know. Matt, come on, baby. 
Who do you think was going to win that? Well, I Come said on, that. Man. I said it earlier, Jimmy. I mean, I've got no, no shame here in losing the bracket challenge to a guy that's a degenerate betting on A-10 <laughs> teams on a Tuesday night. Like, give, given halftime, like, second half lines and whatnot. Damn it. I, I hope you would win it, Otter. Good night. Hey. If you didn't, I, I, shame on you. I know. I know. Well, good for you. Good for you. Maybe we'll go celebrate. We'd also like to congratulate uh, Anna for being the new co-host of uh, Off the Bench and Michelle Southern for being the new co-host on uh, with Annie. (laughs) (laughs) The the girls on Eagle 98.1 did better than Hannah Griff and T-Bob. So uh, Abby did better? Uh, No, Anna and, uh, and Michelle. Oh, and Michelle. Oh, oh. Well, you know, Annie's been struggling a little bit. You know, <laughs> but we're trying to. <laughs> such a we're trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to get him through. He's new. He's a new guy on the show, <laughs> on the stage. So, so we, uh, I mean, poor guy. He's having a little anxiety. You know, oh. Jumbo's eating off his plate. <laughs> this day, you know. <laughs> oh, God. Um, hey, look, All right. The All game right. itself, so though, this- last night, Otter. Man, I look, you and I both had Baylor. Um, man, I don't know that I saw it going that one-sided, though. No, 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 no. Uh, it reminded me so much of the UNLV Duke final. Huh. Not the semifinal, but the final when they beat him by over 30. Because Duke was a very good team. Gonzaga was a very good team. But they out, I mean, they totally intimidated them. Yeah. Um, and listen, man, when you're number one out of 357 entries, they're usually going to hit three. But last night, it, w- it was just a joke. Um, dribble penetration at will if they man, they, they carved up the uh, zone, just flashing into the middle of the paint and getting easy looks. I mean, Vidal is a nice player, but he looked like Charles Barkley last night. Um, it was uh, it was just they're they're bigger, stronger, faster. Um, yeah. It reminded me of UNLV uh, Duke, and because that is a good team, there's no doubt. But we can't get into the best of all time when you play no true road games, which which and I mean they can't play, you know can't play you know it's not on them, but yeah. you know, going on the road in college basketball is a tough deal, it, no matter what conference you're in. So um, I, I think I think that you know. The conversation's more about Gonzaga, but with Baylor, this is one of the best teams, man. I mean, and, and all that leadership that, you know, two seniors, three juniors, all that experience. So, anyway, um, hey, congrats to Baylor. And yeah. you know what it tells you, too, Matt? It can be done. Yeah. It can be done at a non traditional power. So, that's what I like about it because anybody can kind of do this. In football, that's not the case. That's so true. Otter, think about. Man, we were talking about this earlier with Lee. Just think about what Scott Drew inherited. Like, you literally had oh. a program where you were talking about a, a, a murder, Jimmy. A murder. Like, it, I, it, 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 it covered it up by his coach. I, I mean, it's just like, it's been so long, you almost forget, but we've all kind of been reminded now. He inherited. Something literally nobody had ever inherited before in college basketball. And they were patient with him, and it took 18 years, but they've been consistent, and now they reached the top of the mountain, which was really cool to see. I agree with you. And he built it. He yeah. built it. It's not just, you know, and when they, like when people were being critical of Will Wade, i like, do we need to remind you people that where we were, what he inherited? Oh, dude. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, were they a perfectly coached team? Were they perfectly this, that? No, but... We're winning games in a tournament again. Man, know who you are. Yeah. And so well I think it's I think it's big. And I was a little disappointed that we didn't have a classic game, but not totally. I'll take a rocket check over any time as well. But they're just it's just bigger, stronger, faster, intimidating. And I'm sorry, it looked like a bunch of suburban kids that went into an inner city gym for the first time, man. They were wide eyed. With that being said, Jalen Suggs. I give him more credit on performing when things were going that way against that caliber competition. He didn't back down, and he actually elevated his play. He was outstanding, man. He's a great player. Well said. Jimmy Yacht, all right, we got about 60 seconds, man. Hit me with what got right. tonight. All right, I've been on the beach all day, so I defer to my buddy Sean Harnish, and he's a new addition to our guest list on game time. 
And everybody in Vegas says he is the best at MLB handicapper. He's got a money line parlay tonight, Dodgers and White Sox. So we all know that Oakland has been a, a, a huge mess early on. They get killed every game. In the White Sox, uh, a short number as well. So it will come back plus a dollar seventy. Dodgers and college, uh, and college and uh, Dodgers <laughs> and White Sox money line parlay. Compliments of Sean Harnish. All right, game time with Jimmy out. I know you're uh, out again tonight. Hanny's got you covered tonight. No, Mario Perez. Got it. it is <laughs> That's my DJ. That's my <laughs> DJ, DJ enjoy, enjoy the beach and the tequila, Otter. We'll talk to you later. See you, my man. Thanks. All right, that is Jimmy Ott. Congrats to the Otter who did win the 104.5 ESPN uh, VIP bracket challenge of our staff. I finished second behind him. So um, we appreciate the Otter as always. We always appreciate our friends at Insurance Network of Louisiana, title sponsor of our Tuesday shows all throughout the year. LAinsurance.net, better coverage for less money. LAinsurance.net, LAinsurance.net. All right, uh, Brain, what did you learn today? McNeese baseball got stuck in bridge traffic on the way to the game. That's pretty much everybody who's ever on that bridge ever. But thanks to Justin Hill for joining us from the bridge in traffic. Paulie? Well, and the Red Sox do not look good in blue and yellow. I can't disagree. I think the unis look good. It's just absurd that they would wear blue and yellow. What did you learn today, Matt? $50 million. $50 million is the amount that Sharon Lewis is following that lawsuit for against LSU. Stunning. We'll hear that press conference tomorrow. See you tomorrow for a hump day AFR. See you then. AFR. As we get on down the road, remind you about Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. Windows, door siding, Relief Windows, and ReliefWindows.com. 288-8138, 288-8138. If you are interested in having a free inspection on your windows, doors, or siding, that's what you call. Also, the number you call. If you're interested in changing your life, maybe you're heading home right now at 5.56 p.m. and you're thinking, man, leaving another job, another day of a job I don't like. Maybe you're heading to a job that you don't like. You're thinking, I'd love to be challenged every day, have something new every day, a new challenge, a new adventure every day, make more money. You can do it with Relief Windows. Not only do they offer health benefits and retirement, 401k, they also have a bonus structure where you can control how much money you make at Relief Windows. You want more? You can get it with Relief Windows. If you're motivated, you get a great attitude, Brandon, Holly, and the gang want to talk to you at Relief Windows. ReliefWindows.com. Windows, doors, siding. Relief Windows and ReliefWindows.com. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. At All Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, We've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All-Star Toyota today. Call Mr. Electric today for electrical repairs, upgrades, and installations. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State